We all know that Jimmy John's is everyone's go-to option for freaky fast subs, but did you know that they're unveiling new menu options? That's right, Jimmy John's new menu has something for everyone and is a great way to feed the whole family. So, whether you're watching the big game, hard at work, or taking the family out to eat, Jimmy John's wants to make finding a gourmet sandwich easy. The crew of Next Level Broadcasting trusts their pregame meals to Jimmy John's, and you should too, at Jimmy John's in Gaylord. Good evening, everyone. Welcome into Next Level Broadcasting. Yes, it is a night earlier. Not really sure why we're playing on a Thursday night as opposed to a Friday, but it is the hot topic in the Pelston Stadium tonight. Brand new Pelston Stadium, looking very fresh. I do love the finish on the upper deck of the three-quarter deck boards and the rest of it finished with OSB. I think that's a nice touch. I was told that uh, the railings we're seeing all around us were only half done yesterday. So they came in today, got them done, and now we're in the brand new stadium. I'm Jack Cordy, alongside tonight on the Burkhart, on the uh, camera, Mr. Swagalicious, Johnny Burkhart. On another camera, we got Jess, not sure what her last name is. Her name's Magalicious. Jess. Magalicious. We got Tyler Blom, color commentating. Also on color tonight, the man, Charles Strail. And we've also got thick boy, Tyler Bowerman, TB, my guy producing for us. We need a link. Boys, where would you rather that. be? I'll get, I'll get you the link. I wouldn't be anywhere else on a Thursday night right now, Jack. I mean, <laughs> you want to talk about a matchup of two teams coming in in this Division Two of eight-man football in the Ski Valley, and <laughs> this this is going to be the game of the year for both these two teams. Yeah, both teams right now, This is, like you said, Charles, this is looking to be the matchup. Uh, whoever wins this game should come out on top of the Ski Valley. Both teams have played the same team so far this season. Pelston is 5-0. and St. Mary's is 4-1. and We're going to step aside for the playing of the National Anthem. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. So Jack, gotta ready? love that song. Gotta love that song. I forget what uh, St. Mary fan I was talking to, but uh, they referred to the national anthem as the football playing song. Huh? Because every time you know, every time before you play a football game, you play that, and you're right into it. So here we go. Uh, Pelston getting ready to be read their starting lineups. They've got a tunnel made. St. Mary's starting lineups will be named as well. We want to thank Jimmy Johns tonight yep. for uh, bringing us the pregame show. Hey, everybody out there listening, watching, taking in the game tonight, just want to let you know that Jimmy Johns, hey, you need to listen to your heart or listen to your stomach. It's a question we all have to deal with, but why not do both? Jimmy Johns has mood food guaranteed to defeat that enemy called hunger. Jimmy Johns and Gaylord. Jimmy John's and Gaylord absolutely love their food. Looking for something quick. Almost had it today for work, but they weren't open by the time I was ready to eat. 
that's all good. As we said, Charles, both teams come into this game evenly matched right now. Winner of this team is sure to come out on top of the Ski Valley Conference unless there's a wild upset. Uh, St. Mary's tonight without their stud, Brody Jeffers. What do you see them doing? Although he wasn't with them last week either. What do you see them doing uh, really to open up the playbook? I really think this game is going to come down to which offensive line, defensive line can control the tempo and the pace of the game. For instance, St. Mary, the last two weeks against Bel Air and Onaway, their offensive line has been mauling people. I mean, Gavin Bebel, Donovan Bluest have each been having tremendous success getting around the corner and then misdirection. And then finally, Gavin Bebel being able to throw the ball deep, looking pretty good as a pocket passer and extending plays. A little bit to what Chris Krishoniak was able to do last year, getting outside and then buying time, letting his receivers give open. I'm looking for a big game tonight from Donovan Bluest and Dylan Croft. I think Croft defensively brings a physical edge that they're going to need to play with tonight to stop Pelston's ground attack. And also Croft being able to make some separation on the perimeter to get open for um, – bevel to hit them and maybe make some big plays in the open yeah those are key guy, key guys as you said charles and st mary's it, it, it's the same thing in football you you go to the run to open up the pass you go to the pass to open up the run and bevel has showed that he's able to step up and uh, run the quarterback position uh for this team coached by uh, coach o'connell i love coach o'connell wearing the same thing i've seen him wear for every single St. Mary game. I Does he even wash his clothes? I think he th changes it if they lose. At least the underwear. Okay, okay. So, so, so if they lose, he washes If he it. loses, I'm pretty sure he has to reset the wardrobe, you know, go back in. He might even burn those khakis if he loses. Oh, oh him, yeah. You know, because I haven't seen him wear the same shoes or shirt since the last time they played up at Pickford. Well, so. I'm, sh I'm sure if we went into his closet, that's what we'd see is just a, a bunch of long sleeve Nike athletic shirts and just a 50 pairs of khakis. That's right. All it's same like size, that. ready to go. It's and then one pair of uh, jean shorts. It's like that Taylor Swift commercial. What's he going to wear? Khakis. Exactly. What's he going to wear? Coming out to kick here, uh, key player for Pelston, Ethan Landon, the senior, looking to kick it deep. I do like how Pelston comes out here, getting in the sprinter stance, going down to hit someone. Gavin Bebel back deep to receive for the Snowbirds. Kick is off, and it's a good one. Right to Bebel. Let's see if he can make something happen. A lot of room up here. He decides to go up to the left side. He does have a lot of room. Cuts back up to the left. Lowers his shoulder. He's going to be hit hard. Good chunk of running there by Gavin Bebel. Able to get about 25 yards on the return and bring it up to the 45-yard line. Really good turn by Bebel. Able to set up the blocks. Wasn't you know Didn't really need to make anybody miss there, but... Good pickup of yardage on the opening kickoff, setting up the Snowbirds at the 45. Their own territory. Let's see what they can come out with on their opening drive. Yeah, we can. We yep, they got Bebel in the shotgun. He's got Croft to his right, Blues to his left. Let's see which way they decide to go on the first play of the game. Handoff is to Croft up the middle. Tries to make a move, but great defense up front. Able to bust through the line right away for Pelston was number 70, Hayden Doss, a senior, showing his toughness right out the gate. Looks like Doss was able to get by that block by number 50 powers for the Snowbirds and able to slip that block and get Croft for a tackle for a loss. Threw off the timing of the play as well. He was able to bust through, and Croft had to make a cut. Let's see, is Bevel going to keep it and just run to the right side? See what they decide? Nope, he's going to hand it off to Croft, going to the left. Tries to cut another good job of filling the hole there by the linebackers of Pelston. St. Mary's unable to do anything so far offensively. They've lost a yard. It's going to bring up third and 11. Now you have now if you're Pelston, now you know what's coming. It's either going to be a pass or some sort of reverse here. As Ladies they're going to send Croft gentlemen. and Bluest wide to the right. I can already tell it's going to be a physical game tonight. Just the, by the way Pelston's hitting right now. Bebel gets it, looks to pass. He's going to go deep to Bluest right out the gate. He had him there, just able to get by him. Looks like it was just a step past Bluest. Decent coverage right there by the sophomore, Kenny Crawford. But Bluest was able to get behind him, just unable to come down with that one. It's going to bring up a fourth and 11. Good coverage by Pelston, number three that time, all over it. He was right there, but that was a that was a good pass by, uh, by Bebel. Kenny Crawford. Sophomore. 
Bebel with the quick kick. Gets back pretty deep. Third return. He's gonna he's gonna cut right, comes back left. He's still on his feet. He's going down the sideline. Can anyone get him? They are able to catch him. Good running there by Kenny Crawford. Finally knocked out of bounds there. Daniel Powers on the tackle. By number 40. He's brought down at the 40-yard line. Good return there by Kenny Crawford, making plays happen tonight already, saying his name twice, and it looks like he is the starting quarterback. Can you believe how he just stayed behind the pocket there and just ran outside, had enough time to pick to escape the power wall by the Pelston offensive unit there? Yeah, that's just good patience right there by Crawford. Oh, looks like Isaiah Crawford, probably his older brother, is the quarterback. It's going to be a toss outside to Kenny. There's a fumble on the play. Bevel nearly in there. Oh, but great pursuit there by the Snowbirds, able to bring him down. First one in there is 56, Logan Cherry, the senior captain, making a statement. He slammed Kenny Crawford down to the ground. His head snapped, jacked, and hit the grass. That was a good effort by the Snowbirds. Yeah, and that's just that play right there is that's why you need to pursue and you need to do it well. You can tell that they practice it. Uh, the Coach O'Connell goes over it in practice as he had four Snowbirds right there for Crawford to juke into. Want to point out, number 12, Brett Koshoniak, the freshman, moved himself up into the starting lineup at linebacker. Good job, Brett. Handoff is up the middle. He's able to break a tackle. Dragon defenders finally brought down Garrett Cameron, number 27. He's finally brought down by number 30, JT Grenier, the sophomore. Good chunk of running. JT Grenier, another snowbird that has worked himself into the starting lineup. Pelston starting to move the ball. Going to be third and about five here. I want to apologize to the folks at home for my running nose. I don't have COVID. It's just because we're ripping out an old chimney full of mold. Well, it's also I don't a react little windy well. out here, Jack. Got third and five here for the Hornets. Kenny Crawford in that quarterback. He looks to pass. Oh, he's got him wide open. Great pass right there. A good connection to Ethan Landon. I was told by quarterback Brody Jeffers that Landon did like to sneak out of the tight end spot and they would find him. It looks like the Crawford brothers rotate between quarterback and running back. I like the aggression that the Snowbirds are bringing right now. You can tell on these tackles, unlike other games, previous games, um, there is something to prove on the field right now. And that's something that we haven't seen for the last few games. Um, either one team is just taking it all the way to the house the very first play of the game or it's just a blowout win. So I'd like to see the aggression there. St. Mary's stack in the box. They do go to Crawford to the outside. He keeps, he's brought down by his jersey. Great tackling on the edge there by Logan Cherry. Yeah, Cherry just able to blow that play up. Actually thought they might get a holding call on the defense, or Pelston Hornet trying to block Cherry there on the edge. It looked like he had a little jersey grab, but nonetheless, Cherry able to make a four yard tackle for, for loss for the Snowbirds. That's gonna push the Hornets back second and 14. Yeah, it was close. And I like the pos uh, position moving Bluest down to the defensive end spot. Ballinger in the middle. Previously they had, for last game, they had Starsenich in the middle. Cherry on one end, Ballinger on the or Cherry on one end, Ballinger on the other. But I like Bluest with the quickness at the defensive end spot. Crawford sends a man in motion, gets a snap, goes right up the middle. Wow, twenty-seven is a monster. Garrett Cameron, lower in the shoulder, this year, just pushing his own teammates and the opposition out of the way with his shoulder pads, moving four guys at once. But a good stand, nonetheless, by St. Mary's. Going to bring up third and. Looks like 10 and a half yards. So for the Snowbirds here, do you play it safe, conservative? You bring a little heat. After that last they're third down heat. conversion, after that last third down conversion, I think they're going to sit back in a zone here, only rush about four defenders. We'll see, Charles. Big blitz. Sends, sends That's my Cameron in motion to the right. Oh, he's wide open. Goes in motion. and Oh, and he dropped it. Great play design right there. Garrett Cameron with the drop pass. He's Craw getting a lot of action here. Crawford sends Cameron in motion. Cameron was wide open in the end zone. He's unable to come down with the catch. That would have been an easy six. Instead, it's going to be fourth and still the same. They've got to get over. They've got to get 11 yards here for the first down. Yeah, fourth and long. Snowbirds decided not to bring any pressure there. Sit back in the zone, or maybe it might have been a shell. Shell coverage, and Pelston found that area of the zone or shell coverage where they could expose it. Just got to complete the pass for the Hornets. That's yeah, you go into, you go drop back into pass coverage to disrupt the pass, and he's still wide open. Crawford back to pass again. Let's see where he decides to go. 
Buying a lot of time. He's got a lot of space. Can someone make the tackle? Does he have enough for the first down? Bebel able to bring him down. Grenier's there. It looks like he does have enough for the first down. That is going to move the chains. Excellent show of, of athleticism there by Kenny Crawford. Bebel and Grenier working together on that one. I think Bebel made the initial bump on the ball carrier, and then Grenier finished it right up. That was a good effort by those two young men. Crawford didn't have anywhere to go. They had good coverage on land and deep, but he's able to make something happen with his feet on fourth down. Crawford in the shotgun. Cameron to his left, Isaiah to his right. Oh, a great block on the edge by number 50, Aiden Klungel, the junior, getting a pancake block right there. Patrick Ballinger was able to get in there and make that tackle, though. I mean, looked like a tackle for no gain. So Pelson still has the ball on the five-yard line for the Snowbirds, marching let's, it down. Let's see if Pelson or let's see if St. Mary's can make a stand right here as it's starting to get dark. Beautiful night for football. These Pelson Hornets came to play today. Absolutely, Blom. Blom Treasy, same formation. Went to Cameron last time. Let's see who they go to now. Crawford gets it. It's a fake pitch. He keeps it up the middle, and he is in there easily. Totally had the St. Mary defenders trick. Thought it was going to the left to Isaiah Crawford. Kenny decided to keep it up the middle. He's in for an easy six. Pelston scoring on their first drive of the game. What do you think that'd be like, Jack? Um, Kenny Crawford and Isaiah Crawford, they're probably of relation. One is a sophomore and one's a senior. Wouldn't that be cool to go to a school with your cousin or your brother? I would think so, unless you didn't get along. You know, if you got all, you'd, you'd have that bond if you got along. I'd love to go to I would have loved to go to school with my brother, but I, you're right, Blom. I think it would be pretty cool. Kenny Crawford, same formation again. They like to go to this one. Everyone getting set. Gets the snap up the middle to Cameron. He just lowers his shoulder. But into the arms of Patrick Ballinger and Dylan Croft is able to finish him off. That's going to lock our score at 6-0. And with that, we are going to take a break and step aside. This is Next Level Broadcasting. We'll be back with you in a few. Are you interested in building a new home or renovating an existing one? With over 100 years of combined experience, J&J &J Construction is one of the most reliable and respected general contractors in our service area. J&J &J is a trusted construction partner valued by architects, subcontractors, financers, and most of all, their clients. J&J &J Construction has been completing quality homes and improvement projects that add value to the communities they serve. They bring a passion for innovation and a commitment to quality to every job they do. Call them today. Got bubble, bubble gut pretty bad there, folks. We got hot snakes and bubble gut working itself in. Welcome back to the action, folks. Back to receive is Bebel. Ball will go out of bounds. Let's see if St. Mary's decides to have the re-kick or if they'll take it out on offense. Delicious food here at the concession stand. I had a nice hot dog, two hot dogs, and peanut M&Ms. That's a football meal right there. Peanut M&Ms. You know, you got to have something inside of the M&M. I don't know if I can just eat plain M&Ms. I got to have some peanut butter or a peanut. They're even putting pretzels in these M&Ms. I know. Day. They're putting pretzels and caramel and whatnot in there. Delicious. It's about a stroke away from being a whatchamacallit or a take five. Bebel right. alone in the shotgun. See what they can do here on first down. Needed to get points on the board. Bebel keeps up the middle. He's got a lot of room. Able to make a cut, and he's brought down by number 22, Jack Lane, the sophomore. But a nice chunk on first down for St. Mary's. He put the boosters on for that one. Um, usually Bebel is a little bit more calculated and patient, and I can tell on that run, especially that one, that he just wanted to get down the field, Jack. Oh, the, here they go to the big boy package. They've got linemen in at bat, at uh, running back positions. Another keeper to Bebel. Up the left side, he's going to have enough for a first down, and I like that formation there. Strong formation by Coach O'Connell. Yeah, swarmed by a flock of Hornets. Um, that was a good defensive stop right there. Hopefully we can find some solutions about this here. Well, we are finding solutions, and that is picking up first downs. So the, the keeper to Bebel, he hadn't ran the ball yet, or he hadn't ran the ball in the previous possession. And here he is, two plays in a row. He's got a first down. Absolutely. They've got Patrick Ballinger and Noah Hill. Two Bebel's right. 
It's going to be a keeper again. Wow, but a great job filling by Kenny Crawford. He is the star of this Pelston team here. Fills the lane, and he is amped up. Absolutely, and that's a little bit of what I was touching on, Jack. It seems like this defensive pressure is starting to amp right up. Yeah, well, both St. Mary's just needs to get used to it. I think they're coming out rusty. They're used to just rolling over teams. All their past games, besides Pickford, have been blowouts, so this is an actual challenge. You know, Pelson's not just going to roll over. They've got to play hard. They've got to run the right plays. Absolutely. It's going to be fun to let's watch. Let's see if they're going to run Bevel to the left. It's a fake to the left. He comes back right. He's stripped. Ball is knocked out of bounds. Luckily for St. Mary's, they are going to keep it at their own 42-yard line. I wonder what the uh, official is going to say here, Jack. Well, it was a fumble, but the ball was knocked out of bounds. Pelston did not get possession, so it remains in St. Mary's possession. Right. I think we actually have one of the refs mic'd up. Hopefully we can hear what he has to say. Yeah, missed him on that uh, kickoff. But so far haven't tuned into him. Oh, they Bebel's were got Croft to his left. Bluest as well. Bebel gets the pass over to Croft quickly. Go blocking on the edge by Bluest, but great tackling there by Cameron. Brings him down right away. Nowhere to go. I like that quick screen pass, but Pelston was all over it. Pelston also knows how to play St. Mary's offense very well. They blitz just they blitz either the same amount or one more guy uh, when you compare lineman to lineman. So if they've got four offensive linemen, they'll blitz four or five. But then they have one guy that's a quarterback spy. So if the quarterback does decide to run, he's right there to pick him up. Yeah. Same formation here. We've got a timeout, quick timeout here by Pelston. Saw something they didn't like. I think we've only seen two plays that did not involve Garrett Cameron doing something good. Yeah, I, I agree there, Blom. With that timeout, we're going to step aside, thank some of our sponsors. This is Next Level Broadcast. Are you sick and tired of monotonous family dinners? Then you need to call an Audible and let BC Pizza take care of the rest. They've been the best source of handmade hometown gourmet pizzas since 1988. And with over 30 locations, they're built to serve you. Their presence in each community has been second to none. BC Pizza has a wide variety of menu options, including salads, grinders, and of course, their famous pizza. BC Pizza, the best choice pizza. Folks tuning in, let us know where you're listening from, who your player of the game is, who you like watching. Bevel in the shotgun, rolling out. He's just going to heave it. Oh, did Crawford make that interception? No way. Kenny Crawford. Bebel has got to learn how to not just throw it out of and anxiousness. You're right, Blom, and he will learn that. That's just a tough, tough play right there. Throwing across his body, a lot of time in the air. Thought no one would catch it, but with an athlete like Crawford on the field, anything can happen. That's a quick turnover there for St. Mary's. Four minutes, 22 seconds left in this first quarter. Let's see what Pelson has. St. Mary's needs to make a stop. Yeah, they definitely do. Hopefully we can get this conversion, extend this drive out, and get those six points back on the board for us. Got to get a stop. Crawford in the shotgun. Gets a snap. He's looking to pass. A lot of backers in there right away. Oh, he's making guys miss. Great open field tackle there. By Gavin Bevel, saved a lot of yards, but Crawford making guys miss left and right in the backfield, able to pick up seven. Gavin Bevel with a lot of power in that body of his. 5'10", 162, a junior, but hits like a train when he wants to, Jack. He's a grown man. He just hits hard. He's tough. And this St. Mary's squad, you know, looking at the roster, you see 5'7", five, 5'8", five, five, 140, 150, things like that, but they hit hard. It was a hard hit. And they're coming after him right now, but they need to figure out a way to slow down Crawford in this Pelson offense. Crawford goes under center. Nobody back for the Snowbirds. Birds stacking that box. It's going to be a toss to Crawford outside. Great blocking on the edge by Cameron on Croft. Wow. It looks like he will have enough for the first down. It'll be close. What I tell you, Jack, that 27, Cameron, 
and Croft are about the most aggressive players on both sides of the football, and you saw them just clash right there, and I think that Cameron might have won that battle. Yeah, he had a great block on the edge. Crawford getting the play from head coach Jack Carter. They've got three jacks on this team. That's pretty good. That's a lot of jacks. That's a lot of, and, and then me too. There's at least four jacks in the stadium right now. I'd put money on five, maybe. <laughs> and someone else has got to be named Jack. <laughs> Crawford under shotgun. Ooh, fighter jets. Let's see where they go. Crawford's got a lot of room, lowers his shoulder, but an excellent tackle by JT Grenier, and Pelson is doing everything they want to to the St. Mary defense. Yeah, I can't say enough good things about the way that he held on to that tackle. Grenier is a very, very committed tackler when he does get wrapped up like that. But St. Mary's just has to find an answer. Which Crawford do you stop? Which one do you key in on? Right now, right now, Kenny Crawford, Isaiah Crawford, and Garrett Cameron are doing whatever they want. Interesting formation here. Crawford in the shotgun. Dime nickel quarter. It's going to be a fake toss. He decides to keep. Nice job by Gavin Bevel on the edge. Nowhere to go for Pelston. It's going to be a one-yard gain. Second and nine up here. Two minutes left to go here Logan in the Cherry first quarter. Helping out with that tackle there. It's 6'2 at 205 pounds. And he is a senior this year. This is one of his dwindling games to play underneath of these lights. There's a lot of a lot of people surrounding us here, TB. Getting nervous. Do make, best under pressure. Makes, Jack. Me, makes me nervous. I know people are listening live at home, but it makes me a little nor more nervous when they're listening live in person. Oh, I tell you what, Jack, it fires me. <laughs> up. If I got people watching and listening to me, I do. Crawford great. in the shotgun keeps it. He wants to go deep. Oh, is that a grab? He is able to bring it down. Wow. Isaiah Crawford on the hard hit, still able to bring in that pass for a gain of about four yards, going to bring up third and five. A senior for them Hornets just snagged that ball out of the air like he's got sticky hands. Yeah, great catch right there. Even, even with the hard hit, hits the ground, still able to hang on to the pass. Pelson breaks the huddle. What do you think, a first down this play or not, Jack? I don't know. I'm going to go with yes. I can't tell Blom. Blom thinks first down. Let's see. Crawford hands up the middle. That's just an that's just an easy play right there. Just snap it, hand it off to Cameron and let it let him I don't even think he looked up. I think he just lowered his head, looked right at the ground and ran forward. It was like And it's a great play call cuz it allows the Hornets to pick up another first down. Yeah, it's like uh attaching some chains on an I-beam and letting it swing right through that line. I mean, he was just in there. Yep, and not only are they pushing the ball and moving this offense, they're taking a lot of time off the clock in the process, keeping the ball out of the hands of St. Mary's. St. Mary defense out here again. They don't have the, bo the box full this time. Crawford gets the snap. It's a fake toss again. He keeps it. Doesn't look like he had a lot of room, but he's able to sneak his way up the middle for at least five yards. Let's see where they mark it. Wow. Wow, again, at nine yards there on first down. Going to bring up a second and one. A lot of coaches use this term, Jack. I know I heard it when I was in high school. Basically, defense is the best offense, and that's exactly what Pelson Hornets are doing right now. They're not allowing the Snowbirds to get very much time on the offensive end, and therefore is creating quite the good scoring options for themselves. That's going to bring us to the end of the first quarter, folks. We're going to step aside. Don't go anywhere. This is Next Level Broadcasting. We'll be back with you. We all know Northern Michigan winters take a toll on our parking lots and driveways, but Gaylord Seal Coating has you covered. A proud sponsor of local high school athletics, Gaylord Seal Coating specializes in infrared seamless asphalt repair, hot pour crack filling, striping, and more. Need a new snowplow solution this winter? GFC can do that too. Commercial, residential, private roadways and associations, Gaylord Seal Coating is your answer. Give them a call today at 989-732-5003. Halftime show. I'm Pat O'Connor, joined by Charles Strail, Daniel Smith on the camera tonight, Charles. And I mean, first of all, we got to say the swag. It, it's it's getting close to making me look good. Play call from coach. It's third and six. 
just on their side of midfield. Steen is going to haul it up and wide open downfield is Barrett, and he is gone. Check that. Two ends off the left side. It's a toss to Backlund up the left side. Breaks one tackle. He's in. Enough. Chris Kishoniak looks up the middle to Cordy. It is complete. Great catch. Conrad Cordy. Nothing but green after the stiff arm. Touchdown, Snowbird. What a play. The snap is good. Hold is good. Kick is up. The kick is. Back to it, folks. Crawford under center. Gets the snap. This time he will toss to Isaiah Crawford. Great job on the edge by Dylan Croft, able to come down from his linebacker spot. Tackle him short. Conversion here for Pelston, the way their offense has been going. Yeah, it's a rivalry they didn't even know they had, Jack. Just both of them. Both of them, the Bulldogs on each side, each color of the uniform, and they are going at it head to head. Well, St. Mary's needs a new rivalry rival for football because they don't play Joburg anymore. Who's that going to be? You know, it could Jack, be Pelston the way the past few years have gone. Th the way that this game is going, it should be a rivalry. I mean, they've blown out every single team that they've played. Snowbird's talking, and um, the first <coughs> game that they got beat by, it sounds like they got blew out. Crawford under center. Gets the snap, fake is to Isaiah Crawford. Excellent block. Wow. By 44. Landon, laying the wood. A great, pan that's a pancake block in the stat book. And able to pick up another first down is Pelston. Yeah, Daniel Smith just got upended, uprooted. And these Pelston Hornets are pushing around these snowbirds like they're, they're made out of clay. They are, they're just driving the ball. Anything they want to do, they can do right now. What do you think Coach O'Connell's going to say? Halftime. You think he's going to fire the boys up, put a little bit of fire in their blood? He's, he's going to have to. We're going to see what change they're going to have to make. Looks like number, what number is that? 42 has checked into the game. That's Joseph O'Connell. Wow. Sheds a tackle. Sheds a tackle. It looks like he's able to get in. Isaiah Crawford up the left side, able to break a tackle and dive in. He's in there for another touchdown. That's going to push the score 12-0 in favor of Pelston. Big two-point conversion coming up here. St. Mary's has to find a way to stop this Pelston offense. Pelston two for two right now in scoring this football game. If I was Coach O'Connell, what I would do is put some power up front and keep some speed in the back because what they need to do is plug the holes and then attack it with speed when they do get out. Crawford's going to toss it to Cameron and he is going to get in there, lowers the shoulder. Oh my goodness. That is a grown man truck on the end. Coach O'Connell wanted a holding call or some kind of penalty. He's on the sideline. I don't know about that one. I think that was just a good hard run, good play call there by the Hornets. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out who got trucked. It looks like number 30, his arms dangling, looks a little Yeah, I, did, I didn't want to say him, but yeah. He got trucked pretty good right there. This is a good Pelston team. I, I don't know if St. Mary's was ready. They're not playing like they were ready. Well, they need to get their head in the game. They need to find their why, and they need to play with some conviction here. This Pelston offense is just pushing right through them. No doubt, as Pelston comes out to kick it deep again. St. Mary's needs some kind of spark. They haven't had a big offensive play, haven't had a good defensive play. It could happen right here. We need a run back right now, Jack. Bevel coast could, to coast. Bevel could do it. He has the ability. He needs those blocks. Hornets in the sprinter stance, ready to head down. It's going to be an onside kick. They don't dive on the ball. Wow. And that's an absolute gimme. Don't really know what happened right there for the Snowbirds. It's like they just stopped thinking. Ball was in the middle. You had three Snowbirds looking at it. I'll tell you exactly what it is, Jack. They are scared. They, This team, the Pelson Hornets, has earned the respect of these Snowbirds, and they, they wanted nothing to do with it. Snowbirds definitely caught off guard. And as you said, Bob, you can tell after that play right there. First and 10 for Pelson. Just poor effort there by the Snowbirds. Yep, you got some grown men on this Pelson Hornets team. Um, when you see your teammates getting thrown around like this, it's a little degrading. So we got to fire these boys back up. Crawford boys in the shotgun. 
It goes to Kenny. He's looking to pass. He's got he's got Cameron wide open downfield. Doesn't want to go to him. Kenny keeps it himself. It's him and Gavin Bebel in the open field. Oh, he reaches. He fumbled the ball. It's loose. Looks like Cameron recovered it in the end zone. I think that is going to be a touchdown. It will be a touchdown. Pelson comes out and scores on their first play of the drive. Pushes the score 20 to 0. Pelston all over the Snowbirds right now. This is the time where, as a coach, you kind of want it to be like a basketball-style game. You know, you just need to time out, talk to the boys, fire them up a little bit, and uh, hopefully turn the tables as we come out of this defensive drive into an offensive drive. That's what they need. They need some kind of break. They need to get the ball in on offense, need to have some kind of timeout, talk to the boys, let them know that you still have this game under control. Slow down. I mean, right there, that was all Crawford. He just... There was, uh, St. Mary's couldn't do anything. They had one receiver wide open downfield. They had no contain on Crawford. He's back in the shotgun. Gets the snap. He will toss it to Cameron. Running hard. Oh, my gosh. He just lowers his shoulder all day long. Joseph O'Connell there to bring him down. Good tackle there by the sophomore. 42 With is Joseph O'Connell. Joseph O'Connell. With that, oh, and look at that, folks. We got the sideline camera, Johnny Burkhart. Mr. Swagalicious out there working hard. We're going to step aside for a commercial break. This is Next Level Broadcast. Announcer Tyler Blom screaming for his snowbirds. Another onside kick there by Cameron. Ian Oliver falls on it just barely. Got lucky right there. Ball kind of fell right into his lap right there. Able to recover it. St. Mary's gets the ball. Got to make something happen. Important drive right here. Down three possessions. Got to make something happen. With 10 minutes, 19 seconds left to go here in the first half. Yeah, Jack, I've only got one or two of those in the tank, but I just needed to give them a boost. They got to hear a voice in the distance. The stands are dead. They're kind of watching the team deflate. It's pretty quiet. It's quiet over here, Blom. We got to give these boys some fire in their furnace. Bebel gets it, keeps, tries to cut back left, but Landon's there to swing him down for the Hornets. Hornets filling those holes perfectly tonight. They're filling those gaps. They're coming down from their safety positions. Doing a great job. St. Mary's has nowhere to go. When there is a hole, there's a Hornet there to bring you down. Yeah, the, the Hornets defense is like flex seal. Um, they're just in there and it's hard to get through. Uh, maybe, maybe the Snowbirds ought to try uh, number 14, Jake Butler and see if they can get a run down the field. Big shout out to Patrick O'Connor listening in tonight. At home eating his eggs. Gavin Bebel keeps it up the middle. He's going to be brought down by the legs by Klungel, the he's junior. He's eating eggs this late. Well, Patrick, like, okay, so he's on it. So Patrick doesn't really do social media at all, but him and Addy got this Facebook page, and Patrick doesn't like to eat eggs, and he'll post a video of him. I don't know why he thinks it's so entertaining, but he'll post a video of him eating some eggs hmm. that, they, that their chickens hatch. Oh, okay, so he's not eating eggs. He's literally hatching chickens. And eating the eggs. Okay, that's a little He sensitive. really is eating the eggs. Croft goes to the right. Oh, he's got a lot of room. He's still going, able to get the edge. Crawford wraps him up, brings him down. That's Crawford on Croft. That's what we needed. Big gain right there. That's what St. Mary needed for the spark. Look at the body language of the Snowbirds, though. It's almost like these boys don't want to play football. It is weird. Thursday. It is weird. Croft gets a big run, and no one high-fives him. Uh, that's high super him. weird. Croft gets brought down for like a... 30 yard gain and no one high fives him. They just let him it's as if he didn't it's as if he lost yards there. Bebel in the shotgun. Croft. Bebel sends him out wide. Bluest wider to the left. Bebel runs up the middle, decides to keep. Brought down quickly for a couple yard gain. Getting a little chippy out there. 
Wow, these boys Sam Daly. Devil gets shook up on that And play. Daniel Powers going at it. He got a hard, hard, hard brick wall he ran into, and he is walking to the sideline right now. Elbow tucked, took some contact on it. Probably had a stinger, Jack. Daniel Croft, or Daniel Powers, biggest calves in Northern Michigan, Blom. I've heard that. I've heard that on this <laughs> broadcast a lot. I'm obsessed. Bebel gets it, hands it off to Croft. Going up the left side, he's going to be brought down by a few Hornets. I like the way that he carries the ball, Jack. He makes sure it's all secure. He doesn't get referees, any trickery with it. Referees giving a little warning to these players here. It's getting chippy on the edge. Let's them know that next one is going to be a personal foul penalty. What do you Third mean, down Chippy, and Jack? four. Are you, are you talking about the... They're just kind of pushing after the play, pushing at each other away from the edge of the play. I saw the referee come over and give them both a warning, but okay, we that like just happens. That, it's though. football. You're pushing each other. It happens. Yeah, you can't be docile on the field, that's for sure. Bebel in the shotgun. He's got four wide. Let's see what Pelson decides to do here. Pelson's still getting set. Sends Bluest in motion. He will hand it off to Bluest. Wow, just a total busted play right there. Total confusion by the Snowbirds offense. And Landon is able to come in there and take advantage of it. That's going to be a big loss on third down. Fourth and six now for the Snowbirds. Can't be doing that to yourself. You got a third down and a, and a pickup. Can't be doing that to yourself. Yeah, just under seven minutes to go here. Ball's on the 36-yard line. We got to get seven more yards to get that four to a one on first down. Looks like we got a timeout here by St. Mary's. With that timeout, we're going to take a break. Thanks some of our sponsors here. This is Next Level Broadcast. Hello, this is Charles, founder of Next Level Samp Egg. And right now, it doesn't take more than a glance to see how high the water levels are in northern Michigan. As we know, lake levels go in cycles. A few years high, a few years stable, and then a few years low. I started Next Level Sandbag to give you a temporary solution to a temporary problem. Our services can save existing break walls, trees, lawns, and other features you want to protect from high rising water and add a fraction of the cost of other options. To learn more, visit Next Level Sandbag on Facebook and then give us a call. Back to the action here, folks. St. Mary's needs some kind of spark. If they want to get back in this game, I can guarantee that they're going to go for it here on fourth down. And I want to see Bevel air it out. I want to see Bevel roll out and air it out. Haven't seen that yet this game. Yeah, you're right, Jack. That we haven't seen a pass yet from the Snowbirds. He's in the shotgun. Blue Stencroft to his right. It's going to be a keeper. Oh, it's a fake punt. He does pass to Croft over the middle. Tough play right there. No Decent coverage. I don't know if it was good coverage or necessarily that Croft just ran right into the Pelson defenders, but an incomplete pass either way. Turnover on downs. It's going to be Pelson ball coming back, starting this drive at their own 35-yard line. I thought I saw a little bit of a limb get in there and interrupt a little bit, Jack, but, you know, the refs are doing the best they can. I, I don't know. I don't know if that one. I don't think that one was pass interference. That'd be pretty tough to call that one pass interference. Kenny Crawford in the shotgun. Gets the snap. It goes to Isaiah. He's running hard to his left. Logan Cherry on his back. Like a cheetah after a gazelle just brings him right to the ground. For a short gain, just just a, just a couple inches on that gain right there, going to bring down a second and long here. Second and ten, they call it on the score clock. Six minutes, 18 seconds left to go here. First half action. Number 34 for the Snowbirds, Jack. Do you know who that is? Number 34. 24, that is maybe. Lake Palanta. Lake Palanta. Kind of just pushed them a little bit at the end of that play. Got to see some aggression here. Crawford wants to pass. It is a screen and a beautifully set up screen to Cameron on the left side. He's got a lot of room. Can Grenier catch him? Grenier can catch him. Wow, excellent speed by Grenier, able to bring him down. Cameron had a lot of room over there. We're gonna let's cut to the sideline camera. Zoom in right there. Get a nice shot of that celebration. That was just an excellent play call. All the same area defenders were on the right side. Screen was set up beautifully with Cameron over there on the left, two blockers in front of him. Huge gain 
St. Mary's has no answer for this Pelston offense. I thought we were in Africa for a second, Jack. I mean, that was like a cheetah chasing an antelope. He came out of nowhere. Grenier was after him quick, able to bring him down, but another big gain. He saved the touchdown, but they totally flipped the field. They went from their own 35 down to the six of their opponent. These Hornets are just field flipping. Crawford's mouth is watering, can smell that goal line. Gets the snap, he wants to pass again. He evades the rush, runs back to the left. That is there all night long. Ball is go. out. Good job, Bebel. Let's see what they rule. I thought he was in. Bebel is so I thought aggressive. he was in, they're coming together. They got him. Let's see what Bebel's they rule. Let's let's here. let's cut to the referee and see what he has to say. They touched other bounds when they touched it. No, it, I had Pelson okay. jumping okay. on it, so okay. touch back. Okay, Pelson was jumping on out of the bounds. Uh, no, St. Mary's no, Saint jumped Mary's on the inbounds in the end zone, okay. so it looks okay. like a Little inside look there. If you guys like that, make sure that you subscribe. He's about to let us know what the call is going to be. And make sure that you like the video as well. It helps out a lot. If you guys like what you see, go ahead and show some love. Next level broadcasting. Mike must have went out right there. Didn't quite pick up what he had to say there. But it looks like we heard him in the huddle. He called that the uh, St. Mary's recovered the fumble in the end zone. So instead of six points for Pelston, it's now a fumble and in favor of St. Mary's. They're going to get the ball at the 20-yard line on a touchback. Great touchdown saving play there by Bebel. Jack, I think everybody on the Snowbirds team right now needs to match Bevel's intensity. They need to get aggressive, they need to hit hard, and they need to follow through. They got to play like they want to win. It's going to be a keeper by Bevel up the left side. He's got some room, trying to make defenders miss. Goes out of bounds. That's a good pick up there on first down. Looks like he got about eight yards right there. Going to bring up second and two, maybe second and one. Keep but working the ball up the field like we do. It's a choo-choo train to a touchdown, Jack, and I can feel it in my bones. Let's make it happen this time, huh? But you're right, Blom. This is all Bebel right now. Bebel is making everything happen for the St. Mary's team. Like you said, someone needs to match his intensity. Let's see if it's going to be another keeper here by Bebel, making everything happen here for the Birds. Pelston packs that box. They bring everyone. Bebel keeps. Good block on the edge by Croft. Stays in it. Bebel is going to be brought down nice 20, by Will Klein. 20 to 40 yard run somewhere in there. Um, again, Jack, it's just got to, we got to keep doing this. Rinse and repeat. You know, hopefully that these Hornets won't catch on and start making adjustments. Uh, Bebel and Croft, block and run. Croft is getting excellent blocks on the edge. But it's the fill that's happening by the, uh, by the blockers of Pelston. That's making their defense so good. Handoff is to Bluest. Tries to make a man miss. He's still brought down. Good tackle there by Cameron. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're starting to see some rhythm here. I'm liking what I'm seeing. We're pushing closer to the touchdown, and these Snowbirds are starting to get their groove. Checking into the game. Aiden Klungel checking out Hayden Doss. Aiden goes in. Hayden comes out. Hey. Bars. <laughs> God bless bless Bevel back in the shotgun. Hands it off to Croft up the middle. Brought down quickly for a short gain right there. Going to bring up third down and four right now for the Snowbird offense. That's going to give us time to thank a couple ads, Charles Strail. All righty. Hey, guys. So Gaylord Seal Coating. We take for granted how important eyesight is in our everyday lives. But Gaylord Eye Care wants to help you see better and see with the world what it's meant to be. With four locations in Gaylord, Boyne City, Bel Air, and Sheboygan, they're here to help you do just that. Gaylord Seal Coating. Michigan roads and driveways take a beating. Protect your driveway or other road services with Gaylord Seal Coating. We're going to take a break. Step back to the action. Back to the action, what everyone came for. Bebel up the middle of the blue. It's got a lot of room off that right side. Lowers the shoulder. Excellent tackle on the edge there by Kenny, by, uh, Kenny Crawford. Blues didn't think he was down, tried to run again, but the referees called him down. Another first down for St. Mary's. It seems like they've figured out this Pelston defense for the time being. Nervous kind of calm down for the Snowbirds here. 
Um, obviously, that was a big change of momentum with the fumble recovery in the end zone. Yep. Uh, I think it would be really big for the momentum heading into halftime for the Snowbirds to put some points on the board here. No doubt, and they need to. And this drive could take up the rest of the playcock with three minutes, 13 seconds left to go here in the first half action. Yes, I totally agree with that, Charles. I mean, they really do need to put some points on the board here. Bevel keeps he's got a lot of room up the right side, puts on the jukes. Going to be brought down. Oh, this game is getting really chippy right there, really chippy right there in the middle. Number 44 After the with play. the tackle, Ethan Landon is a senior this year. That's Ingles and Will Klein going at it. I'd like to see it. Great run by Bevel, though. Picks up a lot of yards. St. Mary's are knocking on the door, you near, know, nearly in the red zone. Jack, I've always been the aggressive guy on the field in high school, and uh, I know that's not the most popular opinion. I know that you know there's, there's things in place to prevent that from getting out of hand. But in a situation like this, um, you've got to have that chippiness. You've got to have that aggression. It's the only way you're going to make a difference on this field with 20 points down. Daniel Smith now in the quarterback position with Gavin Bevel on the bench. Smith keeps it, runs to the right. He's got some room, picks up a solid five yards right there. On first down, Daniel Smith is first time carrying the ball tonight. Wow, just a sledgehammer of a hit. These Hornets are crazy with it tonight, Jack. But not too crazy. I mean, they still allowed a five-yard gain right there, and St. Mary's is driving. Blues checks into the back into the game. Daniel Smith is out. Oh, yeah, I mean, performance-wise, yeah, you know, they're not. Bebel is still not on the field. But they're winning. Wonder they what's hit, going on with him. They are hitting hard. We have a timeout here by St. Mary's. Coach O'Connell didn't like what he saw. With that, we are going to thank some more sponsors. Charles Strail hopping on the broadcast. All right. I want to thank Schultz Party Store. Heading north or traveling to an away game or just getting comfy to watch the Snowbirds play. Stop into Schultz Marathon Party Store for your fill up and all of your favorite snacks, drinks, and other road trip essentials. Next level sandbag. Ever play cards with a sandbagger? If so, then you know the frustration. But if you or anyone you know is having water erosion problems with their house or waterfront property, the next level sandbag is who you want to know. Because as lake water ebbs and flows, next level sandbag is the way to go. Oh, my gosh. How long did it take you to come up with that one? Who, who told you that slogan? That was me. I don't think you came up with that. I write that. my own ads. No way. No way. I would use him if, I, if my house – actually, you need to go to Lake Manuka, dude. I, hey, bet I also totally want to say, Patrick O'Connor, right I cannot win player of the game. Sorry. Snap is to Bebel. He keeps it, running up the right side, lowers his shoulder. Colt Ingles in the house, former St. Mary, washed up alum. We got to get Jake Butler. Referee setting the ball. ball, third down and three here for the Snowbirds. You know what, Jack? I want to see Jake Butler run the ball. I think you'll put it in the end zone. Jake Butler yet to check into the game. Gavin Bebel back in the quarterback spot. Flag on the play. Hopefully it's not. If, it, it's, if it's against St. Mary's, that's killer. If it's against St. Mary's, that's absolutely killer. Let's see what the ref's got to say. Five yards is a lot of yards on this drive here. I want to anticipate a pass play. We need to see the ball in the air. Except, you know, Jack, I take that back. We've had two picks so far. They are ready for that. They are ready to pick the ball out of the air. I think the referee got sick of us listening to him. Must have turned his mic off. <laughs> it that. is against St. Mary's. Looks like maybe a false start. Going to bring up third and eight. Bebel keeps it. And in there right away is number 21, the sophomore, Jacob Rizzardi. And a swarm of Hornets in there to clean him up. He is That's a loss on the play for game. fourth and nine. St. Mary's, no answer right now. There's a minute left on the clock. Let's see what they decide to do. I'm guessing they're going to take it down, take the play clock down to as low as they can and run a play. Bevel gets the play call from Coach O'Connell. Out to the huddle he goes. St. Mary's lines it up. They got their large formation out here. Bevel wants to pass. He does. Ball is knocked down. If it wasn't, if it wouldn't have been knocked down by Cameron, it would have been intercepted. Pelston now has an opportunity to go. Let's see how many yards they got to go here, Blom. I think 75. I they think got 75 yards to go here in 36.9 seconds. Now, 
I they can do it. They can do it on one play. We uh, unfortunately don't know how many timeouts left the Hornets have left. The scoreboard here does not make us privy to that information. That's, but that's no big deal. No big deal. Let's see. I, I'm, I'm guessing that Crawford's going to be carrying the load on this drive here. I tell you what, they've got an answer for everything on defense. They are anticipating every pass play that we have as the Snowbirds here. Shotgun formation. Crawford gets the snap. He wants to pass. There's a lot going on over the middle of the field. I don't know how there wasn't a flag on the play. Kind of an interesting call on that far side. That was landed on Bluest. Landon just kind of looked like he was trying to block and he took Blues to the ground, but it was a pass play. I, I also, the referee, it looked like he didn't know what to call. Some kind of confusion on his face. No gain nonetheless. Second and 10 here, 31 seconds to go. Right now, the clock is your enemy if you're the Pelston Hornets. Crawford in the shotgun. You got Crawford and Cameron behind him. Gets the snap. He's going to keep it himself. Patrick Ballinger grabs onto his jersey. Down on two knees, one hand on the jersey, able to bring him down. We're going to get a timeout here by Pelston. 22.1 seconds left to go here in this first half action. St. Mary's finds himself down by three possessions. We're going to step aside, thank a couple of our sponsors. No, we are not. No, we are not. So are We're they allowed to grab the jerseys then, Jack, Are they in the high school football Oh, realm? yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, you've always been able to grab the jersey. I mean, you just can't hold if you're blocking. But if you're tackling someone, you can pretty, if you're tackling someone, you can pretty much bring them down any way you want as long as you don't trip them or grab them by the face mask or the horse collar. I think that's about it. I want to see a suplex. <laughs> Jess says you can't choke them. No, you can't choke them. You yeah, can't do that. That would be a little too far. That would be too far. That would be some type of charge. I wonder what play they're going to come out with here. They could they could really open up the – they can go to anything they want. I like Crawford rolling out every single time that they've had passing routes coming to one side and Crawford rolls out the other way. It's been wide open. So, Kenny Crawford, a very dangerous sophomore in the St. Man Football League. Whoa. Snap is over his head, though. Let's see if they can recover it. He picks it up. Nice. Bluest is right there to bring him down. That is totally going to kill this Pelston drive. Let's see if they decide to bring the play clock to zero. Like a they feisty won't. Jaguar. It's going to be a timeout by St. Mary's. This first half is not going to come to an end. Man, I, I, I got to blow my nose so bad. You go ahead, buddy. I can take right over. So bad. You. Let's, let's, see, let's right. hear some so live we, reads. You know what I'm saying? Every single day that you've got a little bit of hunger in your stomach or maybe you got a quench of thirst, there's one place that comes to mind, and I'll tell you right now where that's at. It's north. Um, maybe it's an away game. Either way, you can stop in a Schultz Marathon for your fill-up in all your favorite snacks, drinks, and other road trip essentials. Paul and Casey says, go get them snowbirds. Thanks, thanks, Paul Casey. He is where now, Colorado? Where's he at? Downstate, why did I think Colorado? He was just in Colorado, okay. Okay, who else? It's all it's all Paul Casey, it's all Patrick O'Connor. I keep looking in to see who's talking. It's it's our guy. I it's just different without Patrick here. Patrick and Brady Hunter missing them both. Deep punt, excellent punt, way back for Pelston. Bevel has no chance to pick it up. Ball is still rolling. Are they gonna let it? That is, wow, that is an interesting, interesting siren right there. That's going to wrap up this first half action. Pelston up 20-0 to against the Snowbirds. We're going to step aside, come back with a halftime show. This is Next Level Broadcasting. We all know that Jimmy John's is everyone's go-to option for freaky fast subs. But did you know that they're unveiling new menu options? That's right. Jimmy John's new menu has something for everyone and is a great way to feed the whole family. So whether you're watching the big game, hard at work, or taking the family out to eat, Jimmy John's wants to make finding a gourmet sandwich easy. 
The crew of Next Level Broadcasting trusts their pregame meals to Jimmy John's, and you should too, at Jimmy John's in Gaylord. Are you sick and tired of monotonous family dinners? Then you need to call an Audible and let BC Pizza take care of the rest. They've been the best source of handmade hometown gourmet pizzas since 1988. And with over 30 locations, they're built to serve you. Their presence in each community has been second to none. BC Pizza has a wide variety of menu options, including salads, grinders, and of course, their famous pizza. BC Pizza, the best choice pizza. Are you interested in building a new home or renovating an existing one? With over 100 years of combined experience, J&J Construction is one of the most reliable and respected general contractors in our service area. J&J is a trusted construction partner valued by architects, subcontractors, financers, and most of all, their clients. J&J Construction has been completing quality homes and improvement projects that add value to the communities they serve. They bring a passion for innovation and a commitment to quality to every job they do. Call them today. Vision Source and Gaylord Eye Care are proud to be offering their services to local communities across northern Michigan. With locations in Gaylord, Point City, Bel Air, and Sheboygan, they're committed to serving you and providing a trusted source of credentials and expertise. If you're struggling with anything vision related, then don't hesitate to schedule a consultation and meet their friendly and experienced staff for yourself. Time show. I'm Pat O'Connor, joined by Charles Trail, Daniel Smith. Backlund up the left side. Break one tackle. He's in. No. Kirsten Shoniak looks up the middle to Cordy. It is complete. Great catch. Conrad Cordy. Nothing but green after the stiff arm. Touchdown, Snowbird. What a play. The snap is good. Hold is good. Kick is up. The kick is no good. Still Today I'm going to tell you about sportsmanship because it's important. Treat your opponents the way you would want to be treated. <laughs> My mom says that. Listen to the referees. It's their job. Be nice to their team and our team. Cheer them on. Always play fair. It's the right thing to do. It's sportsmanship. It's not that hard. Halftime show. I'm Pat O'Connor, joined by Charles Strail, Daniel Smith. On the camera tonight, Charles, and I mean, first of all, we got to say the swag. It, it's it's getting close to making me look good. Play call from coach. It's third and six, just on their side of midfield. Steedham is going to haul it up and wide open downfield is Barrett, and he is gone. Check that. Two ends off the left side. It's a toss to Backlund up the left side. Breaks one tackle. He's in. Enough. Christian Shoniak looks up the middle to Cordy. It is complete. Great catch. Conrad Cody, nothing but green after the stiff arm. Touchdown, Snowbird. What a play. The snap is good. Hold is good. Kick is up. The kick is no good. Just this is Charles, founder of Next Level Broadcasting. Interested in advertising on our channel? Get a hold of us. And next week, this commercial could be yours. Vision Source and Gaylord Eye Care are proud to be offering their services to local communities across northern Michigan. With locations in Gaylord, Point City, Bel Air, and Sheboygan, they're committed to serving you and providing a trusted source of credentials and expertise. If you're struggling with anything vision related, then don't hesitate to schedule a consultation and meet their friendly and experienced staff for yourself. This is cut to Johnny's camera yeah. if he's on the scoreboard. How's the school bus treating you? Okay. I'm going to tell you about sportsmanship because it's important. Treat your opponents the way you would want to be treated. <laughs> My mom says that. Listen to the referees. 
It's their job. Be nice to their team and our team. Cheer them on. Always play fair. It's the right thing to do. It's sportsmanship. It's not that hard. Welcome back in, everyone. This is Charles Strail with Next Level Broadcasting. We're at halftime. I'm joined by Tyler Blome, and we're going to just talk a little bit about what we saw in the first half. Uh, Pelston up 20-0. to zero. It's been all Hornets in the first half. Snowbirds need to come up with an answer here. Tyler, what do you think? You know, I think a lot, Charles. There's a lot going on that I really like to see. And first and foremost, top of the list is how aggressive these Hornets are. I mean, they are playing with conviction. They either really want to win really bad or it's just a, um, a situation, an environment up here where it's football and it's a football-centered town and they're corn-fed boys and they know how to just get on the field and get the job done. And on Snowbird side of things, I'm seeing sparks of some passion. I'm seeing sparks of some aggression. Uh, Bebel has made a few key tackles, forcing two fumbles with that aggression. And Croft, he's been plugging as best as he can and making some blocks and going head-to-head -head with Crawford, who's been making a lot of plays. And also, you have um, Bluest and Smith coming in with a little bit of intensity. But other than that, Charles, I would say that the Snowbirds either need to get fired up or they're going to have a long two quarters ahead of them. Sure. And like I said, if you're just joining us, Snowbirds down 20 to 0 to the Palestine Hornets. This is the BC Pizza halftime show here on Next Level Broadcasting coverage of Gaylord St. Mary football. And, well, <laughs> it's been a tough half of football for the Snowbirds, as I mentioned. 20 to 0 at halftime. They did have a drive towards the end of the second quarter where they were able to move the ball down convincingly at that, down to the Palestine 20 where an illegal procedure, or uh, might have been a false start actually, pushed them back five yards, pushed them to a third and eight, they weren't able to convert, fourth down, incomplete pass, the Hornets got the ball back. But, you know, this actually could be 28 to zero right now because the Snowbirds had the opportunity to fall on a fumble, got a touchback of a Pelston miscue. So if you're the Snowbirds, given how bad you've played, if you're only down 20 to zero and Eight-man football, we've seen <laughs> crazy things happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think if you're Coach O'Connell, one of the things that you might try is getting some of your more animated, more aggressive players on the field, regardless of if they know the plays, regardless of if they are starting or the second team, regardless. Um, there needs to be a fire on the field to match the intensity of these Hornets. And I think, Charles, I've said this a lot. I know I'm repeating myself, but I think that is the key on how to get some points on the board. You've got to match the intensity of these Hornets. Right. And, you know, for the Snowbirds, they have shown signs of life. They've had real good success running to the right side with quarterback. Now, I really like when they're able to bring – all seven guys in as blockers and run straight quarterback uh, to the right or to the left. That seems to be their most effective play. However, the one thing that you have to consider is how many hits do you want to expose quarterback Gavin Bevel to because he's taken some licks and he's also been the leading carrier for the Snowbirds so far. So got to be careful on how many touches you give Bevel because he is the quarterback of this offense. Yeah, absolutely. And just to remind you guys, this is a fun football game to watch. There's a lot of good hits. There's a lot of fumbles, a lot of interceptions, a lot of action. So if you guys like what you're seeing, go ahead and find that subscribe button. There's a little bell next to it. It's, it'll just notify you when there's some Friday night lights or some Friday junior night lights like tonight. And um, also comment where you're from, what you like, what you don't like, what we could work on, and like that video. It helps the algorithm. Anything that you can do, if you like what you see, we will accept here at Next Level Broadcasting. But, yeah, just to touch on it, um, the Snowbirds are making some strides. They are starting to figure it out. I did see them hit the groove a little bit with, like what you mentioned, Charles, running the ball outside, um, doing quarterback sneaks. But I think what the, the key here is going to be is if they hit, have some power, they line up some power, get some bigger guys in there, some blockers, some guys that like to throw some hands, and put them in front of a speedy or a powerful runner namely Jake Butler or Bebel or Croft, and just let that aggression in that big wall in front of them, like you said, push right through to get some gains. Sure, I completely agree with that. With that being said here, we're going to take a, a quick break here on the BC Pizza halftime show. We're going to hear from Gaylord Seal Coding and pay some 
shout outs to the St. Mary Cathedral School. So with that, I'm Charles Strail. We'll be back with you on the other side of this break on Next Level Broadcasting. We all know Northern Michigan winters take a toll on our parking lots and driveways, but Gaylord Steel Coating has you covered. A proud sponsor of local high school athletics, Gaylord Steel Coating specializes in infrared seamless asphalt repair, hot pour crack filling, striping, and more. Need a new snowplow solution this winter? GSC can do that too. Commercial, residential, private roadways, and associations, Gaylord Steel Coating is your answer. Give them a call today at 989-732-5003. We all know that Jimmy John's is everyone's go-to option for freaky fast subs, but did you know that they're unveiling new menu options? That's right, Jimmy John's new menu has something for everyone and is a great way to feed the whole family. So, whether you're watching the big game, hard at work, or taking the family out to eat, Jimmy John's wants to make finding a gourmet sandwich easy. The crew of Next Level Broadcasting trusts their pregame meals to Jimmy John's, and you should too, at Jimmy John's in Gaylord. Vision Source and Gaylord Eye Care are proud to be offering their services to local communities across northern Michigan. With locations in Gaylord, Point City, Bel Air, and Sheboygan, they're committed to serving you and providing a trusted source of credentials and expertise. If you're struggling with anything vision related, then don't hesitate to schedule a consultation and meet their friendly and experienced staff for yourself. Are you sick and tired of monotonous family dinners? then you need to call an Audible and let BC Pizza take care of the rest. They've been the best source of handmade hometown gourmet pizzas since 1988. And with over 30 locations, they're built to serve you. Their presence in each community has been second to none. BC Pizza has a wide variety of menu options, including salads, grinders, and of course, their famous pizza. BC Pizza, the best choice pizza. Hello, this is Charles, founder of Next Level Sam Egg. And right now, it doesn't take more than a glance to see how high the water levels are in northern Michigan. As we know, lake levels go in cycles, a few years high, a few years stable, and then a few years low. I started Next Level Sandbag to give you a temporary solution to a temporary problem. Our services can save existing break walls, trees, lawns, and other features you want to protect from high rising water and at a fraction of the cost of other options. To learn more, visit Next Level Sandbag on Facebook and then give us a call. We all know that Jimmy John's is everyone's go-to option for freaky fast subs, but did you know that they're unveiling new menu options? That's right, Jimmy John's new menu has something for everyone and is a great way to feed the whole family. So, whether you're watching the big game, hard at work, or taking the family out to eat, Jimmy John's wants to make finding a gourmet sandwich easy. The crew of Next Level Broadcasting trusts their pregame meals to Jimmy John's, and you should too, at Jimmy John's in Gaylord. Are you sick and tired of monotonous family dinners? Then you need to call an Audible and let BC Pizza take care of the rest. They've been the best source of handmade hometown gourmet pizzas since 1988. And with over 30 locations, they're built to serve you. Their presence in each community has been second to none. BC Pizza has a wide variety of menu options, including salads, grinders, and of course, their famous pizza. BC Pizza, the best choice pizza. Are you interested in building a new home or renovating an existing one? With over 100 years of combined experience, J&J Construction is one of the most reliable and respected general contractors in our service area. J&J is a trusted construction partner valued by architects, subcontractors, financers, and most of all, their clients. J&J Construction has been completing quality homes and improvement projects that add value to the communities they serve. 
They bring a passion for innovation and a commitment to quality to every job they do. Call them today. Vision Count us down. Begins. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the broadcast. I am Tyler Blom, and I am color commentating with the man himself, Jack Cordy, here to call the Snowbirds and the Hornets. I'm here dead silent in the stadium. Can't hear anything. Bebel out to kick here for the Snowbirds. They find themselves down 20 to nothing, flipping the field here. See if that helps them out at all. Back to receive is... Number 22, Jack Lane. Just a ghost town out here. It's kind of eerie. Smoke oh, oh, St. Mary's could get it. Excellent recovery by Isaiah Crawford. He's still running. Ball bounces off of him. He's able to recover it and get a couple yards there. That was a crazy block on Bebel. I mean, he flew through the air. That kid is getting busted up tonight. Pelston fans getting really excited for that one. He thought he was going to the house. If he cut outside, he might have been able to. Bevel and Smith having a little discussion in the defensive backfield. Let's find out what Coach O'Connell told them they need to do defensively. Let's see who got more fired up. Who got fired up more during Looks like time. they got Jake Butler out there in that linebacker position. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a number to watch, folks. Oh, whoa, whoa, up the left side. Don't even know where he went. Isaiah Crawford out of nowhere gets... In open field up the left side. And a lot of yardage there to pick up that first down. Let's not start the drive this way again. This is looking a lot like the very first possession of the game, Jack. Yeah, they just, Pelson just can do whatever they want. Whether they go to the left, whether they go to the right, whether they run up to the middle, doesn't matter if it's Cameron, doesn't matter if it's one of the Crawford boys. They're getting yards. Crawford in the shotgun, hands it off to Cameron up the left side. He's got a lot of room. Is juking players. No one can bring him down. Finally, they do. Number 24, Dylan Croft in there to bring him down, but not before he picks up about 20. And another big game there on first down. Moves the chains. Already knocking on the door. They're at St. Mary's 26-yard line. 27-yard line. Number 21, Patrick <laughs> Bellinger getting chippy after that help tackle. Oh, it's going to be a good game, Jack. Good game to watch. It is. Very tight game. Even though St. Mary's is down three possessions, still very tight. Like it Crawford like it. under center. Gets the snap, fakes the toss, keeps it himself. Boom. Brought down quickly by Croft and Kashoniak for a short game. Get her make it. Second and nine. Let's see what they can do here on second down. First time this drive that they have been stopped on first down. Check out number 14. Jake Butler. Check in 12th. Number. Brett Kishoniak. Brett Kishoniak. Number 12, Brett Kishoniak. Crawford once again under center, two backs behind him. He goes back as well. He's in the shotgun. Gets the snap, fakes toss to the left, keeps himself loose is there but can't make the tackle. A host of St. Mary defenders hey. there. Good tackle out of bounds. Taking it to the very end of the play, Dylan Croft. Nothing too dirty there, just good solid football. <laughs> oh, my gosh. He shoved it right into the injured Hornet on the sideline. <laughs> Got to dodge out of the way quickly. Third down and eight here. Gain of just maybe a yard. Looks like a Kenny wide. Kenny Crawford gets the play. Wide formation for, by the Snowbirds. Um, probably just used to getting ran on, and they want to prevent the touchdown, the long gains. Pelson doing a great job getting their athletes into space. Let's see what they can do on this one to make that happen. Crawford gets the snap. Wide nice. open nice as the receiver landed. Let's see if he's got enough for the first down. It looks like he might. Do they want to bring the chains out of measure? It's pretty close. It is going to be fourth down, not enough. So gain of about eight yards right there. 
Going to break up a fourth in inches. Yeah, bevel tough Referees as nails. coming together. Chop block, I think that's what it's called. Let's check into the referee, see if we can hear him. Oh, it's off. Never mind. The mic is off. Bringing it out to measure. Everyone hold it tight. We got to see exactly. It is going to be short. Oh, maybe not. He moved it forward a little bit. Still no signal yet. It is going to be fourth down. Could it be any closer? Could not be any closer. In high school football, a fourth down in this short is almost a guarantee to pick up for a first down. That quarterback sneak is so easy to do. Yeah. But Crawford is not under center. He is in the shotgun. Cameron to his left. Isaiah Crawford to his right. Handoff is to Cameron. Making defenders miss. Finally brought down by Croft for a pickup of about six yards. It will be enough for a first down. Cameron is just an absolute beast, but he's limping off the field. Checking in for him is a sophomore, Rizzardi. The only guy to do that to him would be Croft. Love to see the aggression. Hope he's okay, though. No injury on the play. Crawford gets the play yet again. I got a little tweak on Jogs into the huddle. Starsenich and the defensive line. I love that defensive line. You got big boys. Cherry, Starsenich, and Ballinger. And then just a little, little bluest on the end. Speed. Power and speed. I like that Power combination and speed. as well. Good combination. Not working out for him so far. Crawford in the shotgun. Let's see what he decides to do on this play. It's going to be a toss to Rizzardi. Still running. Breaks some tackles. Running hard right there. A lot of yards gained there. On first down, good tackling in front by Klungel as, as well is going to bring up another first down, knocking on the door in the red zone. Number oh, 50, he scored. Aiden Klungel. Did he score? Plum? Pushes Bebel. Way, he did score, Bob. He did score. That's a touchdown right there. Makes it 26 0. Hornets. Two point conversion here. Yeah, let's give it up for a crew. We got Macalicious on the camera here, TB running production, and we've got Johnny B down TB there. TB is just holding it down up here. Working that holding it camera. down. What is he holding down? Everything. Everything. Okay. Crawford in the shotgun. Gets the snap. It's a keeper to him. He is going to be short, brought down by Gavin Bebel. Stop. That's going to keep our score at 26-0. Charles Sturrow, what do you got for me? Hey, guys. I just had a hot dog at the concession stand here, but if you aren't like me and don't have uh, access to that, you got to hit up BC Pizza. Parents, we all know how hard it is sometimes to endure a long day at work, come home, and then be tasked with a kid looking at you saying, Mom, what's for dinner? Well, if you don't want to have to deal with that, take the burden off your shoulders and let BC Pizza handle the rest, specializing in food for the whole family. BC Pizza. Second, J&J Construction. Need a way to build your perfect dream home? If that's you, you need to have J&J &J Construction make your dreams a reality at J&J &J Construction. It's the name that contractors, local builders trust to get your project done right and on time. Jack, it's hard to right get contractors to show up on time these days. It's really hard to get them to show up with everyone being so busy. I myself am a subcontractor. There's pretty much unlimited work out right now. Unlimited work. Landed here to kick. Unlimited work is a blessing. Unlimited work is an absolute blessing, Bob, if you can handle it. Landon does kick it deep. Bebel going to get a chance here. Let's see if St. Mary's can make anything happen here on the special teams. And they can't. Bebel was brought down by his own player, Jake Butler. <laughs> How'd that happen? A little bit of a miscue there. A little bit of a miscommunication right there. Bebel grabbed by the leg. He's brought down. Nowhere to go. Hornets all over the field. It looked like Bevel was a step slower than he usually is. I think he's having a little bit of residual damage in this game, Jack. I mean, he's taking a lot of licks tonight. He could be. He's taking a lot of hits. Um, he's still playing tough, though. St. Mary's gets the play call from Coach Boris and Coach O'Connell. Just to uh, kind of piggyback with Gavin, I mean, he is playing his heart out right now. Um, I mean, the amount that they've been running him due to the student body right, student body left, been their best offense. Haven't seen this formation yet here. Trips left. 
Bebel keeps it. He's got room up the middle, lowers his shoulder. Solid yards right there, and that is a good play call offensively by the Snowbirds. Decided to spread it out and go to Bebel. And they're going to go with a hurry up. They want to get points on the board here quickly. Tackle by number 26, Will Klein. He is a junior this year, and he ripped it down. Hornets swarm nearly brought him down. Man-to-man -man coverage all over the field. Bebel does go deep to Croft. It's not there, though. Excellent coverage on the edge by Isaiah Crawford. Was with Croft step for step. Snowbirds there were trying to get a little hitch and go double move up the sideline to Croft, and Pelson saw it the whole way. Uh, right now, the Snowbirds are got a third and four. Let's see what they can do here. Bebel again in the shotgun. They go to the same formation. Just need to figure out what they can do offensively to get the ball moving. It is a keeper by Bebel up the middle. He's brought down instantly, though. Number maybe 44. a yard, maybe a yard. It's going to bring up a fourth down and two here. Ethan Landon. They got to go. I, I can imagine they're going to go for it. They're going to go for it. They aren't even at midfield. Ten yards, ten plus yards short of midfield. They are going to go for it. Big Just play. a couple yards here for St. Mary's. Looks Big. like a Hail Mary formation. Sends Grenier in motion. Bebel keeps it up the middle, decides to cut back left. Crawford wraps him up. Wow, Crawford is a great player. It Very tough player. Excellent tackle Kenny, in the open field. Kenny Crawford. Should be enough for the first down, though. Yep, Looks yep. like they're going to move the sticks here. Big fourth down conversion for the Snowbirds. Bebel able to pick it up, keep the sticks moving. We do have an injury update for anybody watching. Number 27 called his name a lot in the first half. That's... Garrett Cameron for the Hornets. He's getting some medical attention on the Hornets sideline. Double gets a snap, rolls to his right. Doesn't have anywhere to go, making defenders miss. Tries to get it to Blusk. But that's just good coverage here by the Hornets. Doing, man, they got great defense, great coaching here. Oh, ambulance rolling onto the field here. Probably a torn tendon in the ankle, if I had to guess. What? A guess? If I had to if guess. If he had to guess anything in his injury. Yep, that's exactly what it looked like. Wild to guess. Me. Bebel back in the shotgun, throws it quick over to Blues. That's not there, as Blom called. The ambulance pulling up. Oh, but they drove right by him. They drove right by him. Oh, they're going right by Johnny Burkhart. Johnny Burkhart looks nervous down there. He's thinking, oh, God, I hope they're not after me. Yeah. They, I've, I've heard him tell stories about how he gets kidnapped and brought yeah. to the hospital on accident. <laughs> yeah. quite a Sometimes. Few That's going to bring Sometimes. up a third and ten for Snowbirds. Bebel rolls to his right, wants to go deep to Bluest. He has him wide open, able to get behind Crawford. It's to race to the end zone. Can Crawford catch him? He can't. Touchdown. That's a touchdown for the Snowbirds, their first of the game. Yay, yay. We Excellent can. connection from Bluest, or from Bebel to Bluest. Gets the, gets the Snowbirds their first touchdown of the game. We've been waiting to see the Air B and B connection tonight between Bebel and Bluest finally get it. Get a major hookup here for about 60 yards from Bebel to Bluest just to play the Snowbirds needed. Let's get some energy injected into the Snowbird team. Yeah, I really wish there would be, Charles, but the stands are dead. The, the team on the sidelines are not excited. I mean, I don't know what's going on. After a touchdown, I'd be freaking out. It's about the team on the field. The team on the field. Bebel keeps. He's going to be and in. He's in. He's in for two. Excellent pickup on that two-point conversion. Two-point conversion could be very important coming down the stretch here. St. Mary is down by 16, 18 points by mistake. With that, we're going to step aside, get some commercials here. This is Next Level Broadcast. Then I tell you about sportsmanship, because it's important. Treat your opponents the way you would want to be treated. <laughs> My mom says that. Listen to the referees. It's their job. Be nice to their team and our team. Cheer them on. Always play fair. It's the right thing to do. It's sportsmanship. It's not that hard. Back to it, folks. Hornet, Snowbird action. Nice touchdown there for St. Mary's. Maybe they'll be able to open up the play, go, 
playbook with that successful pass right there. Bluest just able to get Craw behind Crawford at the last second. Another onside kick here by Bevo. It's a good one. Oh, it wow. is recovered, though. Excellent job number by number 10. First time hearing his name tonight, Caleb Cran Cranick. Number one, Daniel Smith, Snowbird, just shot right out of a cannon, just missed. If that would have been a connection, it would have been an extremely hard hit. So coming out of the big play from the Airbnb connection, the Hornets are going to have the ball on the 50-yard line here and – no uh, opportunity for St. Mary to really, really put the screws to this game. Uh, the Hornets have had control of this game the whole overwhelming majority of the game. So if St. Mary can get a stop, three and out, or maybe a turnover here, that would be a big momentum boost. They for just need a stop. They need to get the ball back. Do not let Pelston score here. Crawford gets it. Tosses it out to Isaiah Crawford. Nowhere to go. Big play. Patrick that. Ballinger is hyped up right now in there right away. That was Stops a long, him. long swinging pitch outside. That was probably the longest pitch I've seen in about five or ten games. Yeah, an excellent pursuit right there. Able to bring him down for a loss of five. Second and 15. Excellent job up front by the Snowbirds. Crawford gets that play in. Let's see what it is. Let's just see know what it's going to be. They're getting ready to come out here. Just going back to that play, Jack, Patrick Ballinger absolutely just shot through they tried to pull a lineman, and Patrick Ballinger just followed him right to the ball, and there was nowhere to go. He's going up second and 15. Patrick Ballinger, just a beast. It's his senior year. He's got nothing to lose. Cherry in there right away. It's a beautifully set up screen to Isaiah Crawford. Good patience, waiting behind his blockers. Wow. Tries to get the edge. Good Gavin job. Bebel, excellent job of staying behind this, or staying in front of the block, coming down and making a tackle on Crawford. But another excellent setup screen is a big gain for these Hornets. That was the perfect time to call a screen pass right there for the Hornets. I mean, you're a foot away from having a great momentous play for the Snowbirds. Yeah, Pelston able to flip it out, get it in the flats, pick up a big game, move the sticks. We do have a Hornet down here, so that's going to give us a little bit of time to thank some of our sponsors again tonight. So we have the Gaylord Seal Coating people. Michigan roads and driveways take a beating. Protect your driveway or other road surfaces with Gaylord Seal Coating because no matter what, Gaylord Seal Coating has you covered. Get a hold of them at 989-732-5003. We're back to some action in Pelston, Michigan tonight. Jack, we've uh, seen this game ebb and flow, a lot of turning points. Snowbird's got to get something going. They got to get something going. They did offensively, but now their defense needs to make a stand. Crawford once again in the shotgun. Ball is on the ground. Oh, oh, let's see if they decide to throw the flag. They want the, oh, the referee wanted to throw the flag so bad. I think Logan Cherry just got a little excited. Dome on Crawford a little late after that play. I think I think he his momentum was going, taking him to the ground, and he I think the official realized that he was trying to pull off because it looked like he was reaching for that flag, and then after he saw the last, yep. uh, you know, he might have saw the intent of what Logan was doing, and he decided, you know what, there was not enough intent there yep. for uh, unnecessary roughness. Pelston coaches do not like that. Uh, we just got an explanation from the official saying that Logan Cherry was pushed by a uh, Pelston offensive lineman into the Well, luckily you just watch the broadcast over again, and you'll know. That's right. You'll know. You don't even need to question. Just watch next level broadcasting once again. Four minutes, 58 seconds left here in this third quarter action. Crawford to the shotgun. Whoa. Snap over his head again. They need to figure out that center quarterback. Communication. Another big loss is going to break up a third down and 30. Pelston going the wrong way. St. Mary loving it. You know, I, I just want to rewind a little bit on the defensive effort of Bebel. Um, he was able to stand behind that that wall of blockers a few plays ago and be patient enough to wrap right back around and bring uh, Crawford down. And that, in turn, has led us into this defensive, what I would say is a victory so far, Jack. Absolutely. I mean, you look at this third and long situation right now, the Hornets have shown that they can easily get this many yards in one play, but St. Mary's, these past few possessions have done an excellent job defensively. Now they've got Crawford under center. 
It's going to be a toss to Isaiah Crawford. Ball is on the ground. Patrick Ballinger falls right there on Isaiah Crawford. A little chippiness going on right there between the tens in the middle of the field, but it's fourth down and, man, 40? Fourth and 40. Fourth and 40. Fourth and, no, I don't know if it's 40. Fourth and 30. That's a lot of yards either way. Hey, guys, I think they're going to punt here. Got it. Got to expect a punt. So, got to expect a punt. Just want to make a quick point, but it seems like the attitude of Pelston has really kind of shifted yes, after it has. the injury of Garrett Cameron. Number 27 here on the sideline seeking medical attention. It's been a big morale. Oh, Blue should have blocked that one. Oh, Bebel lets it go. It's going to go all the way down to the one yard line. That's he was in the end zone, though. They're going to mark that ball down at the one yard line. Uh, I see. I don't know why Bebel just didn't pick that ball up. That ball was rolling right. I mean, unless he thought he was going to fumble it, that ball was rolling right to him. I don't know if he thought it was going to the end zone or what, but. Maybe it was a poison. Maybe it was a poison. Maybe it was a poison call. For those watching at home, poison call means get away from the ball. Don't touch it's it. It's poison. That's Don't right. touch it. It's poison. It's poison. Don't touch it. <laughs> it's poison, folks. Don't touch it. So, Jack, what do you think here? You got to run a, a quarterback to the right and left here? I think they're going to spread it out, and then Bevels, they're just going to say, Bevel, get as many yards as you can. Quick timeout here by Pelston. They've got only got coach coming in. Too many players. Don't think the they had enough. Oh, they only had seven players out there. Good heads up play call on the timeout. We're going to take a second. A second. Stecker. Quick, we're going to take a second to thank our Jimmy John's sponsors. This is Next Level Broadcast. We all know that Jimmy John's is everyone's go-to option for freaky fast subs, but did you know that they're unveiling new menu options? That's right, Jimmy John's new menu has something for everyone and is a great way to feed the whole family. So, whether you're watching the big game, hard at work, or taking the family out to eat, Jimmy John's wants to make finding a gourmet sandwich easy. The crew of Next Level Broadcasting trusts their pregame meals to Jimmy John's, and you should too, at Jimmy John's in Gaylord. Back, back into it, folks. Sideline snap. Excellent job there by Johnny Burkhart, Mr. Swag. He told me his day when he was younger was Mr. Swagalicious. I would love to meet one person that ever called him that. Also, big shout-out to Margie DeLapp, watching from Illinois. Go Jack Lane. St. Mary's on their own one. Snap is to Bebel. A lot of time in the pocket. Throws over the middle to Grenier. Had him, but good defense by number 22. Jack Lane. Lane. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Margie shouts out Jack Lane, and just like that, he makes the play. We got to give that to Margie. Good job, Margie. What is the ambulance doing? Is it just driving I think circles it's just, around the I track? I think it's just trying to flex. I don't know. I think he's driving Bevel circles. making defenders miss. He's got a lot of room. Showing the speed up the right side. Cuts it back, and he's still going. Finally brought down. Ball is out, but he was down before it was out. Big gain by Bevel of the scramble of the pass play. Huge gain there. Huge Snowbirds gain right there. Picks up about 30 yards. Able to get out of the shadow of their own end zone there after an incomplete pass on first down. You can feel the tide of momentum starting to shift here, Jack and Tyler. Straight into the hurry up. Bebel by himself once again in the shotgun. St. Mary's decides they like this offense. Should have been a false start by Croft, but it's a no call. Blues yeah. just wide open over the middle and an excellent find by Bebel. Is enough for a first down. That's an 11-yard gain. Blues is hyped up. Needs his shoulder pads fixed. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the juice is here. The Snowbirds have finally found <laughs> it, and they are making progression up the field now. Oh, oh. He's got Smith wide open. Can he find him? Whoa! Smith is able to bring it in. Yep. Excellent job by Bebel to extend the play. Rolls out to the right. Throws off his back foot, across his body. Paid for it earlier in this game with an interception, but this time he finds Smith, who corrals it, brings it in for another big gain. As you said, favor or momentum in favor of St. Mary's right now, marching down the field on the Hornets' 30-yard line. Yeah, yeah. Bebel by himself in the shotgun. Good job by the offensive lineman blocking so far this possession. He steps up, tries to juke, nowhere to go. What do you know? As soon as I say it, he's brought down by Landon. In there right away. Nowhere to go for Bevel. That's a nice sack by this Hornets defense. Did make a good decision there. Uh, he had a man cutting across the field, but he had three 
Uh, Hornets closing in on him in the pocket, just best to cover up that ball, live to play another down. Yeah, you don't want to turn the ball over, especially when you're this close to scoring. Yeah, it's got to be tempting to just whip Bebel that ball Bebel goes up. deep, dangerous throw. Lucky that one wasn't intercepted. Trying to go to Smith, but Lane was there deep enough with good coverage. I think the Snowbirds might have something here on the bottom side of this formation, maybe able to get Croft on a slant. They're playing him one-on-one -on -one right there with um, – Single coverage from number seven. Isaiah That's Crawford's a good athlete, though. I, I like I like Croft matched up one-on-one, -on -one, though. That slant is wide open, as you said it. They don't go to it. Bebel rolling out, goes back across the body. Nowhere to go this time. As you said, Charles, I do like that. That Crawford-Croft matchup over there, they have yet to go to it. And that slant is there wide open if they can get the ball over to him. But throwing a, a, a slant successfully in high school football is very hard to do. Let's remember that he's also got two interceptions this game, so probably not too keen on throwing the ball that way. They got to, though, with two minutes and 37 seconds left to go here in this third quarter. Grenier getting lined up. Bebel by himself. Miscommunication. They do get lined up on the edge there. It is going to be a false start, just killing themselves right there. Look who's about to check in here, folks. Dylan Croft with a little extra step. Go ahead, Blub. I think that uh, number 27 is doing his rounds. I think that he might actually come back into the game here, and that would be a huge help to these Hornets. Cameron, yeah. Cameron, you can see the coach on the sideline telling him, like, okay, I want you to go in, but if you're hurt, I don't want you to go in. So he still wants him to take it easy. Let's see what St. Mary's has here. Yes. Devil goes over the middle. He does find Smith. They will not have the first down. There is a flag on the play. Let's see what the call is. What do you think it is, TB? Roughing the passer. It's a hold against St. Mary's. No doubt that it's going to be denied. It is going to be a turnover on downs. Good stand here by this Hornets defense. So a little sign of life there, though, although the drive stalled with an incomplete pass, the Snowbirds were able to put something together. And the last drive for Pelston, you're able to see three botch snaps and one bad toss to the right. So Pelston having a lot of trouble right now handling the ball. So if you're in St. Mary right now, a three and out here would be huge. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Pelston's just getting a little sloppy. If they just – if they just – Get a little more clean with their exchanges, with their snaps, with the quarterback center exchange. They're going to be golden as once again they go to their favorite formation, Crawford in the shotgun. Notice how their formation's a little wider. Gets the snap. That's a handoff to Rosardi. Couple of yards gained right there. Going to bring up second and seven. Nice handoff up the left side. Rosardi haven't heard his name a lot tonight. But with Cameron out of the game, he's the man to step up. We started the game without any um, safeties in the backfield, and it looks like we are starting to put the linebackers in a little bit more space and actually have some men or some boys down back in the field towards the free safety as well. Four coaches on the sideline talking to Cameron, trying to get him back into the game. Crawford hands off to Crawford up the left si right side. He's got a lot of room. Hurdles, guys. Brecka Shoniak tracks him down from behind. Brings him down, but not after a 20-yard gain that is going to move the chains once again here with a minute 45 left on the third quarter. Got a really good edge seal block there on the right side of that Pelston offensive line. Crawford able to turn the corner, and then it was uh, basically one-on-one -on -one with Brett Kershoniak, the freshman, able to bring him down. A huge open field tackle there for Kershoniak. However, now I was just about to make the point the St. Mary defensive line, we need, we need a little juice from those guys. Those guys uh, are the heart and soul of this defense. Someone's got to bust through the hole. So big defensive play needs to be made here on the St. Mary side. Crawford fakes the pitch, decides to keep himself, goes to the edge. Bebel is there to bring him down, taking him hard out of bounds. Big tackle. Right Still down the over there on the sideline, brings him up. Couple nothing, of yards gained right there. Nothing malicious, just a good, hard, clean tackle playing to Absolutely. the whistle. You got to play Let's to that call whistle, call it a folks. gain of three. What a fun game to watch today, fellas. If you guys are liking what you're seeing, go ahead and like and subscribe. Maybe drop a comment down and tell us how we're doing. This is Next Level Broadcasting. Hit the bell for no notifications. Um, you will get notified when we do cover these football games in northern Michigan. Maggie Booth. Wants to give another shout-out to Jack Lane. He's got a lot of fans. Jack Lane, 
popular guy, local celebrity over here in Pelston. Got people watching from all over the place. Crawford back in the shotgun. He gets it, hands it off to Isaiah Crawford. Once again, successful play up the right side, making defenders miss. He's still on his feet, doesn't want to go down. Finally, Blues is there to wrap him up and bring him down, but once again, a big gain on the play by Isaiah Crawford will move the chains once again. Now Pelson is knocking on the door at the St. Mary 30-yard line. Yeah, One this minute is left to go here. A totally different game than the first half. I like what I'm seeing. There's a little bit more pep in the step here with the Snowbirds. And you see Cameron warming up on the sideline. Want to make a note that St. Mary has started to have success as soon as Cameron was out of the game as a key player here for this Hornets squad. Crawford hands it off to Rizzardi. He's got room up the left side, lowers the shoulder, but so does Bebel as they meet. Bebel brings him down, but not after a gain of nine yards. We do have a Hornet down in the field. That's going to give us time to go to a commercial break and thank some of our sponsors. This is Next Level Broadcast. Are you interested in building a new home or renovating an existing one? With over 100 years of combined experience, J&J &J Construction is one of the most reliable and respected general contractors in our service area. J&J &J is a trusted construction partner valued by architects, subcontractors, financers, and most of all, their clients. J&J &J Construction has been completing quality homes and improvement projects that add value to the communities they serve. They bring a passion for innovation and a commitment to quality to every job they do. Call them today. Are you sick and tired of monotonous family dinners? Then you need to call an Audible and let BC Pizza take care of the rest. They've been the best source of handmade hometown gourmet pizzas since 1988. And with over 30 locations, they're built to serve you. Their presence in each community has been second to none. BC Pizza has a wide variety of menu options, including salads, grinders, and of course, their famous pizza. BC Pizza, the best choice pizza. Halftime show. I'm Pat O'Connor, joined by Charles Strail, Daniel Smith, on the camera tonight. Charles, and I mean, first of all, we got to say the swag. It, it's it's getting close to making me look good. Play call from Coach. It's third and six, just on their side of midfield. Steen is going to haul it up and wide open downfield as Barrett, and he is gone. Check that. Two ends off the left side. It's a toss to Backlund up the left side. Breaks one tackle. He's in. Enough. Chris Kishoniak looks up the middle to Cordy. It is complete. Great catch. Conrad Cordy. Nothing but green after the stiff arm. Touchdown, Snowbird. What a play. The snap is good. Hold is good. Kick is up. The kick is no good. Just this is Charles, founder of Next Level Broadcasting. Interested in advertising on our channel? Get a hold of us. And next week, this commercial could be yours. Hello, this is Charles, founder of Next Level Samp Egg. And right now, it doesn't take more than a glance to see how high the water levels are in northern Michigan. As we know, lake levels go in cycles. A few years high, a few years stable, and then a few years low. I started Next Level Sandbag to give you a temporary solution to a temporary problem. Our services can save existing break walls, trees, lawns, and other features you want to protect from high rising water and add a fraction of the cost of other options. To learn more, visit Next Level Sandbag on Facebook and then give us a call. Welcome back in, folks. We are here at the Pelston High School field. If you're just joining us, 
the St. Mary's Snowbirds trail Pelston Hornets 26 to 8. We do have an injury on the field right now for Pelston. It's number 34, Zach Moyer. He is, um, they're looking at his left leg here, Jack. We don't want to speculate too much, but we do believe that it is a lower leg injury. Yeah, don't know exactly what, but he is down. Hopefully everything is all right. You hate to see injuries no matter what side of the ball you're on you don't want to see a kid go down right ambulance came in here flexed a little bit drove around now they're back let's see if are they going to drive on the field i or do you think they're just going to carry him looks like they're going to carry him i think you know for, for he is able to walk that's good he's standing on it by himself right now shoe is off of one foot He's walking by himself. That's a great sign. Got a big round of applause here for Zach. Um, he's going to make it off the field under his own power, but but he was down for a, a while there, seeking and getting attention. And he's going throw tosses the cleat. Headed to the sideline. Now he's stretching, standing on his own. That is excellent to excellent to see. No matter which team you're cheering for, yeah, we're EMT super glad just he next to him, okay. making sure he's still okay. Yep, the ambulance has been chilling out here on this field for quite a long time. Hopefully, we have more healthy players and less hurt ones. Pelston, right back to it. They are ready to go. No wasted time. Ooh. Oh, right away, right away in there. Handoff to Isaiah Crawford. That's number 42. Joseph O'Connell busts through the middle, wide open, and brings him down. Croft on the back end of that too, number 24, just to finish it off. <laughs> he looked like he was shot out of a rocket. He was. It, 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 no one, no one blocked him. That is going, man. That's a weird. I, it's still taking me a second to get used to that. Sounds like there's a fire every yeah. time that alarm goes off. That's going to take us to the fourth quarter, folks. St. Mary's down here, 18, 12 minutes on that play clock. Can they make it happen? This is. Next level broadcast. And then I tell you about sportsmanship, because it's important. Treat your opponents the way you would want to be treated. <laughs> My mom says that. Listen to the referees. It's their job. Be nice to their team and our team. Cheer them on. Always play fair. It's the right thing to do. It's sportsmanship. It's not that hard. Vision Source and Gaylord Eye Care are proud to be offering their services to local communities across northern Michigan. With locations in Gaylord, Point City, Bel Air, and Sheboygan, they're committed to serving you and providing a trusted source of credentials and expertise. If you're struggling with anything vision related, then don't hesitate to schedule a consultation and meet their friendly and experienced staff for yourself. Right back to it, folks. Crawford in the shotgun. Isaiah Crawford up the left side, making defenders miss. Lowers the shoulder. Gavin Bebel up there to bring him down. Can't tell yet how many yards he gained. He is close to that five-yard line, though. See where they mark him. Going to be fourth down and short. Fourth and call it three yards here. Yeah. Let's see Bebel, if Pelston can pick it up. Bebel got low on that one and anticipated the direction that the ball carrier was going and did a great job of just wrapping up, making sure that he didn't take it to the house. Crawford under center. Gets the snap, goes up the middle to Cameron. Back in the game, he's dragged backwards by Starsenich. Let's see if he has enough here for the first down. Referees coming together, no signal yet. It's so close, even TB is out of his seat, checking it out. It is enough for a first down, and now it's a first and goal here. Four chances to get into the end zone for this Hornets offense. St. Mary's needing a stop desperately. Got to stop him four times in a row or get that ball back. You know, strip it from him, pick it off, whatever's got to happen. We got to fire the boys up again. They're looking a little slack out there. We got to get the fire under the kettle once more, get the fire back in the snowbird spirit, and get a stop and get six more points on the board. Short distance to go. Crawford gets the snap. 
Keeps it himself, going to the left side, nowhere to go. Dylan Croft, the first one there, able to bring him down. That's going to be a loss on the play. Now it's second down and goal. Five yards to go here. Crawford back over to the coach. Let's see what they can do on second down. They That's exactly what I was looking for, Jack. Just mentioned it a play previously. Um, it looks like they're playing with some conviction, and they don't want that Hornets ball team to cross that end, end zone line. Same formation here. Crawford, Crawford, Cameron. He decides to keep, wants to air it out. Nowhere to go, breaks a tackle. He's got room up the left side. He is out of bounds just short. Croft able to chase him. Looks like it's going to be fourth down now and one. Third down and one. One yard and you're in the end zone for six. Yeah, what's the chances? Brett Kershoniak checking into the game. What's the chances they cross that line? They got two chances to do it. With how their offense is going, it's a good chance, but. You think they're going to stack the big boys in front on the Snowbird side of things and try to get a big old stop in the middle? I don't know. I don't know because Pelson has shown they can go into the outside. I don't know. Times where I don't know what to do, I'm glad that head coach O'Connell is coaching. Absolutely. High snap. Crawford still able to get it down. Pelston shoots himself in the foot on that one. It's going to now bring a fourth down and short still. Nine minutes, 45 seconds left to go in this ball game. Pelston hanging on to the ball, wants to waste as much time as they can. St. Mary's, as soon as they get the ball back, they got to go to the hurry up, down three possessions. Absolutely. It's just a battle. I mean, you got to hand it to the Snowbirds defense right now. It's, it has been three or four possessions right now close in the red zone, and they've been able to fend them off thus far. This could be the game. This could determine the game right here, the outcome of this play. St. Mary's needs this stop. Pelston needs to get into the end zone. Which one will come out on top? Deep formation. Nice. Flag on the play in there right away is Dylan Croft. Let's see what the flag is. If it's against Pelston, it's a turnover on downs. It looks like the indication is that it is against Pelston. St. Mary's is going to deny the penalty. They pulled it off, Jack. Let's see what the call is here. Still no call. Illegal, illegal formation. Yeah, I actually made a comment illegal on shift. that formation before that the ball was snapped. It, it was very stacked in the backfield. I don't know what was illegal about it. Jack, maybe they moved a different way than they were supposed to, but um, there, there was something that looked goofy. You could just tell that something was off. And let's give it up for the Snowbirds defense, able to fend off them Hornets from getting to their nest. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how good their defense is. they got to come out now and drive down the field. they got a lot of yards to go. 90... How many yards is that, Blom? 92? 92 yards to go. Well, the def uh, defense is... Oftentimes the best offense, and I think that they're starting to turn the tables now, Jack, with playing defense better is going to create a lot of Looks like they're going to spread momentum. them out wide. I think St. Mary's just got to delay a game. No way. Taking way too long if that is the call. It is a delay a game. St. Mary's taking their sweet time. That's going to push them five yards back. Now they've got 95 yards to go. Just a little bit of an unnecessary negative. Very avoidable. we got to work on that. But let's see what we can do now for this third down. Bevel sends Croft in motion. Doesn't hand it to him. Going deep to Bluest. Excellent coverage on the edge by Cameron. Forces an incomplete pass. He was right there with him. And Bluest is up slow. Limping. Jogging back to the huddle. No more hurt players tonight, Jack. We don't want to see any more guys go down. Great coverage right there. They tried to get Cameron on the edge with a double move by Bluest, but he had nowhere to go. Let's see if we can fight out of this tight corner we are in on second down. Ball on the three with 15 to go. Same play. They go to Bluest again. Same exact play. The little double move, but Cameron is too good of a defensive back. He's not falling for that. Well, you also just watched uh, Bluest limp back to the huddle. I don't know why we would call the same play over again. 
Well, I mean, Blues, it doesn't matter if he's limping. He's still going to be running 100%. That play, he was more open than the last time, but still an incomplete pass nonetheless. Bevel and shotgun once again. Goes over to Bluest. Brought down very quickly by Cameron. Hit hard. Let's see if he has enough for the first down. I do like that decision by Coach O'Connell. If you ha Whatever receiver is one-on-one -on, -one on the edge, get the ball to him quickly. Way to hold on to that ball. Bluest caught that thing and made sure Oh, it was it incomplete. It was incomplete. Pop out. He must have trapped it against the ground. Hmm. Looked like he caught it to me. Yeah, it looked Bevel like Bevel has to punt it, unfortunately. Cameron's going to have a chance to return. A very dangerous return, man. Someone's getting trucked. Lowers his shoulder. He's brought down. Wow. They might as well should have gone for it. A great return there by Cameron. It's going to bring up a first and goal here for Pelston. Coming out of that defensive stand. I think that the Snowbirds are going to be able to pull off exactly what they just did, um, even though that the Hornets are coming with some uh, momentum on this drive after that punt. Um, they did just one drive ago, one possession ago, fend off these Hornets from getting to their nest. Four <laughs> or five downs <laughs> in a row. Jerry LaPointe. Wow, Dylan just smoked the QB for a 10-yard loss. You guys say nothing. You can do <laughs> better. We're trying, Jerry. We'll focus in on that. First to 10 here for the Hornets. Crawford rolls out left, tries to go over to Landon, but it sails over his head and out of bounds. Yeah, Good defensive rush there by the front of St. Mary's. You got to have a lot of eyes on everything up here. We got a camera crew going and ambulances flirting around. So, yeah, I am very, very happy that Croft was able to get in there and smoke that QB. We love seeing that. That's great football. If you guys haven't yet, go ahead and feel free to subscribe and turn the bell on. Um, what that'll do is it'll notify you when there is some high school football to watch and leave a comment on how we can get better or the things that you do enjoy watching. Like the video, this is Next Level Broadcasting. Long time in the huddle. You can start to see the breath coming out of the helmets. You can feel the cold air on this beautiful night in Pelston. Crawford, back to pass. Sets up the screen again. Pass falls incomplete. Patrick Ballinger was there all over Isaiah Crawford. Bear hugged him. Incomplete pass brings up a third and ten. Pelston is, as you just said, Charles, Pelston is not taking any time off the clock this possession. Man, that look at that first down and ten. How close is Pelston to that goal line? I mean, where they're getting a first down. Oh, I that I'd dude say. is right. There. <laughs> yeah, that guy in the chain gate is right there at the pylon. First down, touchdown. Little difference, folks. I mean, we're right there. Ten yards to go here. Four six. Crawford under center. Ooh. False start. That's going to be on the tight end. On the edge. Number ten. That's Caleb Cranick. Freshman. Unfortunate. Going to back up five yards for the Hornets. Eight minutes, 29 seconds left to go. Here we are, here third down game. again, Jack. The Snowbirds are in the red zone, and they are doing a good job of putting up a giant wall of defense. Hopefully they can do it for one more down. Two more downs, Blom. Two more. They got third down. They got fourth down. Yeah, I didn't get a report from if Pelson has a field goal kicker or not and what their range is. I don't think so. I doubt it. Ball's Ball out. Ball on the ground. Who has it? It St. looks Mary. like St. Mary's. Is that Dylan 24? Croft? It is Dylan yep. Croft. There we go. Pump oh. some blood back into this organ. We are in the zone. St. Mary's has the ball back. They got to get hyped up, though. Just very little energy. Eight minutes, 25 seconds left to go here in this fourth quarter. With that, we're going to have time to thank one of our sponsors very quickly. This is Next Level Broadcast. We all know Northern Michigan winters take a toll on our parking lots and driveways, but Gaylord Steel Coating has you covered. A proud sponsor of local high school athletics, Gaylord Steel Coating specializes in infrared seamless asphalt repair, hot pour crack filling, striping, and more. Need a new snowplow solution this winter? GSC can do that too. Commercial, residential, private roadways, and associations, Gaylord Steel Coating is your answer. Go, go, go. Right back to it. Bevel gets the snap. He wants to go to Bluest. Wow. Makes the catch what a in catch. between two defenders. Looks like he was being held onto a little bit as well. 
but it doesn't matter. A nice gain there. I like Bebel going to Bluest. I love that connection through the air. Airbnb. Jack. Airbnb. That might have to. The Airbnb. Jack, and I think you just proved it right. Uh, Bluest is able, even after the limping, to make these outstanding catches. Absolutely good effort by Bluest. Oh, what a catch. wow, did he make that catch? No way. I want to point out that Bluest has no gloves on. That's an all-natural catch right there. Hauls it in, even with great defense on the outside no glove by gang. Kenny Crawford. It's the no-glove gang, Jack. I think that's a tribute. They just keep going to Bluest. Keep going to Bluest. That's their only answer right now. What about that catch by Bebel? He snagged that out of the air like ODJ. Bebel rolls to his right. Oh. Nowhere to go. Ball is on Ball the out. ground. Big hit. Huge hit. Oh, my goodness. Who was that, number 50? I believe that was 50 for the Hornets with a massive. Lungle swallows him up and plants him into the ground. Huge loss. Totally negates that big gain by Blues the previous two plays. It's going to bring up a second down and 25. However, at this point in time, Jack, it's everything is in four down territory. So a moderate gain here in second down. Snowbirds will be right back into it. Absolutely. I like the way that the Snowbirds are playing. Lots of energy here. Bebel goes to Smith right away. Nice, nice move. move by Smith up the middle. Still on his feet. Solid gain right there. Looks like about 20 yards. Going to bring up third down and six. Yeah, Smith caught that one over the middle, gave him a little dream shake, threw the left shoulder back, yeah. Pelston Hornet bit on that, and was able to turn it upfield for another eight yards. So third and six for the Snowbirds. And I like Bebel not going deep every play, deciding to go short and getting solid yards there. He's doing a great job in this quarterback position. He I really is. like to see. And the pass game is what's opening them up on this drive here, Jeff. Sends Croft in motion, keeps it himself up the middle. Gaining a good amount of yards right there on third down. It will be fourth down, though. Fourth and two. A definite pickup here for St. Mary's. They can do it. They need this right here. They got to score. Can get one of their three much-needed touchdowns right here on this possession. Oh, Bevel's going to be dr dropped. Will Klein comes in from the backside, the junior. On the free rush on the end, able to come up from behind and bring him down. That is going to kill the momentum yeah, I, of the St. Mary offense. Listen to this crowd. There's finally some energy in the stadium here, and there's a battle of wills. Both of these teams are starting to come alive, and this is starting to get even better football game to watch. Guys, it just it just seemed like the the gas in the tank for the St. Mary receivers there, after running so many consecutive routes and snaps. Not having any, you know, relative substitutions come in. It seemed like they were gassed, not able to get separation for yeah, Bebel. Yeah, and Bebel just had nowhere to go on that one, so he got rushed right away, had to panic and make something happen. Crawford hands it to Cameron. A lot of room up that side. Cuts back. Still on his feet. Finally goes down. He's brought down on the edge by number 12, Breck Oshoniak, but not after a 15-yard gain, moving those chains right away. I want to make a note that the clock does stop after every first down in high school football. So with si oh, it is still running though. So with six minutes left to go here in this fourth quarter action, St. Mary's needing a quick stop. Yeah, you mentioned it, Jack. St. Mary's needs to get a quick stop or maybe even a turnover. Uh, last time when the Hornets had the ball, third and goal, first and goal to go, they passed it, but I don't envision them putting the ball in the air. It's just a tug of war battle. Cameron with the ball. Nice play. Who's in the backfield other than BK? Brett Koshoniak wrapping him up right away for a loss of four yards, second down and 14. I tell you what, you can see the flashes of Brett Koshoniak and the genetical composition there. You know, it's just see ball, go get ball. See ball, get ball, tackle ball. He's in there instantly. I mean, you got to give it up for a freshman being able to come out here and not only compete, but showcase himself in terms of his athleticism, given the fact that Brett is only 14 years old. Well, I mean, it, absolutely. He, he's going against guys that are four, uh, four years older than him. So, as you said, that's an impressive feat, Charles. 14 yards to go here, second down. Tosses to Isaiah Crawford. And Great whoop. pursuit on the edge. Brett Koshoniak in there, in there to clean him up. Ouch. Who is that? The senior. Logan, Logan Jerry. Jerry. 
56. Man, that was a dangerous one, though. He kind of tackled him with his neck a little bit, didn't he? Wow, another five-yard loss makes it third and 21. But Felston going the wrong way. St. Mary's defense stepping up, but is it too late? You know who was there to string out that play once again, though? Brekashoniak. Brekashoniak was he, there chasing it down from the backside. He wasn't allowing Crawford any cutbacks. But if you're Pelston, this is a good spot. I mean, they've taken two minutes off the clock in this possession so far, even though they're going the wrong way. But their defense is playing well enough that they don't have to worry about St. Mary's coming and scoring very quickly. Right. I mean, St. Mary's is starting to figure it out offensively, but Pelston still in the driver's seat. Three minutes, 57 seconds left as Isaiah Crawford gets the snap, cuts up the middle, nearly stripped. He gained about 10 yards right there. The Crawford and Cameron show. Going to bring up business. a fourth down and 10. We're going to get a timeout here by St. Mary's. Three minutes and 40 seconds left on the play clock. With that, I am going to send it over to Tyler Blom to read some live ads. Well, I tell you what. It's one thing to read it off of the paper. It's another thing to tell you some personal stories. J&J &J Construction, if you guys are looking in the market right now for a place to buy some property, it's a little ridiculous right now, and you might meet a little bit of, you know, some hesitation. You might meet a little bit of obstruction, but there's one company that really comes to mind here that'll build your perfect dream home. J&J &J Construction makes your dreams a reality. Um, the contractors, the local builders, everybody trusts them, and you will get your project done right and on time. That's the big part about being on time these days. So J&J Construction, folks, if you guys need it done in on time. What I love about Blom is that 94% of that ad was just off the top of his head. <laughs> <laughs> Not even written down there. He just made it up as he went along. <laughs> what does Michael Scott call that, an improvisation? What's oh he yeah. say? An improv conversation, is that it, TB? Something like that. Anyway, back into the action. Landon here to kick it deep. No one back for St. Mary's. Landon does go deep. He's got quite a foot on him. It's long. Oh, it takes a good Pelston bounce as well. It's going to be downed around the 10-yard line. St. Mary's is going to have an opportunity right now. They've got three minutes and 35 seconds on the play clock, down 18. St. Mary's needs three touchdowns and at least one two-point conversion. Matter of fact, they could even kick it in for one of them, and they come out on top. So down, down three scores, obviously. Um, need to be in the hurry-up offense again. Oh, yeah. Uh, so so St. Mary takes a timeout here just to let their players that are going to be running routes to receivers kind of catch their breath here, especially their two-way guys like Donovan Bluest, who's made some incredible plays tonight on the perimeter for the Snowbirds. Let's see what they can muster up here and uh, see if they can put some points on the board with three minutes and 35 seconds left. Yep, not only the seniors, the linemen need to be ready to go too. Two linemen right three now. Three linemen. Three just linemen. enough. Just enough. Have to have a minimum of three. Quick screen over to Croft. He drops Ooh, it. He'll be thinking about that one, Jack. He got too excited. Pass on his way. Looked up just before it hit his hands, and he drops it. TB shaking his head in disappointment. Bevel's jersey isn't even white anymore. Yeah, he Bevel Bevel has been definitely uh, seeing the ground a lot tonight because of the pass rush of Palestine and he has so many carries tonight as well. Oh yeah, just running the ball. Bevel like crazy. keeps it up the right side. Just like that. A nice juke goes down. He, do, he does have enough for the first down, though. Bebel able to pick up 10 yards on that second down. Will stop the clock. Three minutes, right. 46 seconds left. They are going to keep driving. The whole offense is on Bebel's back right now. He's got to air it out. He's got to make something happen with his legs if he gets rushed. That uh, kid is straight impressive. Impressive Tyler Blom right now. Gets the snap over to Smith quickly. Get out of bounds. Smith catches it but has to fall on it right away. Kind of a killer play right there. Clock still runs, gain of maybe a yard. Right. Three minutes left to go here. At that at that point in time, you're kind of better off just letting that pass yeah. go incomplete because you're going to uh, you know, d dish out about 25 seconds there in between yep. snaps. Clock is still running. St. Mary's needs to get up to the line. They got to run a play here. Gavin Givens checks to his receivers on the edge, looking for him to go back to Bluest. Goes over the middle. Bluest able to make the catch. Brought down right away by Cameron. That's a nice hard tackle. What a <laughs> Bluest gets up. that Bluest has. He has snatched so many pigskins out of the air. It's like he's digging for some chit-charcharones. And that never. <laughs> <laughs> that 
that was <laughs> Bebel <laughs> back in the shotgun. Bluest, his best option. Wants to go to him again. It's picked off by Cameron. Will it be a pick six? Excellent read right there. Cameron makes Bebel miss. He is gone. That's a defensive touchdown. That's a pick for six. The first one we've seen all year. Cameron puts the St. Mary run to an end. Cuts right in front of Bluest just before it got to him. Picks it off. Makes Bebel miss at the 10-yard line. And he's in for six with two minutes and 16 seconds left. I I think that might be it for St. Mary's that, after that one. That was a killer play. That one might have done it, folks. Uh, for those of you uh, who might be just joining us, St. Mary was able to have success moving the ball. Um, Gavin Bebel was able to hit, pick up a first down, extend some plays, get a nice completion over the middle to Donovan Blues just before the interception return for a touchdown by Cameron. So, you know, you, you do have to give a little credit to the Palestine Hornets here. Cameron was on the sideline getting medical treatment for a large portion of the second half. Comes in, makes a big play. Hats off to Palestine for being able to make plays. Yeah, and the other side of that coin too, Charles, is Bebel was going to Bluest so many times in that drive just because he was picking so many passes out of the air. I mean, just outstanding hands. Right. But um, it, it got a little repetitive, and um, number 27 was able to well, capitalize on it. Let's, let's not – Sell uh, Cameron Short. He is a heck of an athlete, and he's been burned a couple times by Donovan Bluest tonight in this game. Absolutely. Crawford back in the shotgun here. Wants to pass, goes over to Landon. He catches it in the end zone just in front of the defender. Bebel, he's able to get that two-point conversion. I'm going to kind of piggyback off of what you guys were saying. Just the three athletes between the Crawford boys and Cameron are very, very good. Cameron is very fast. He runs very hard. You can tell that in their plays. It's simply, okay, Cameron, don't raise your head. Just lower your shoulder and run forward. Get us some yards. And, they, and they're and they making plays all over the field, offensively and defensively. That is their core, those three players. So And, and Landon. Landon's also made some – who was that? Ethan Landon, 44, has made some great plays as well. So between those four guys, they are carrying the load here. Yeah, they've got a Pelston. lot of – football to play yet too with Garrett Cameron being a junior Kenny Crawford being a sophomore and Isaiah Crawford being a senior um, two of them are going to stick around for the next year to come yeah you like to hear that as Landon is ready to kick St. Mary's has yet to have their receiving team out there still getting the call from O'Connell expect to see Bebel back to receive are we going to see and he is not back they've got Donovan Blues oh oh no they've got Brett Koshoniak please please kick it to Brett Koshoniak so he can take it to the if the ball if this ball goes to Brett Kishoniak, it's going to the house. What kind of tricks do you think are going to be pulled out of Coach O'Connell's sleeve right now, Jack? Come on! Oh, they're scared. They they didn't want to kick it to Kishoniak. They decided to go out of bounds. Kind of chippy there for special teams. Both teams charging at each other, wanting to lay the lumber. Lay the lumber. They did not want to kick it to Brett Kishoniak because he they knew he would take it to the house. Decided to go out of bounds. St. Mary's is going to get the ball. Needs four scores in just two minutes and 16 seconds. It can, it can be done. It can be done. Four scores and no points more. We've got to get it done here in Pelston as the Hornets line up to go for a defensive stop. St. Mary's gets the call from Coach Boris. Is that Boris Johnson? I, I like the I like a nice job by Pelson coaching staff as well to switch Cameron, your best defender, on to Bluest. Ooh, wide open. Overthrown. Little miscommunication. Butler came on the post inside. Bebel wanted to go deep to the edge. I do like that though. Butler has a lot of speed. I don't know if he is any faster than Matt Childs, the senior. Yeah, the most important thing is he's got fresh legs. But they got to score quick. Yes, he's got fresh legs. Show him the speed. Just go deep. They got to go deep. They got to score. Someone's got to make something happen here for St. Mary's. The QB Bevel up the coming middle. up the middle, decides to keep. 
Good tackle in the middle by Isaiah Crawford. Bebel really close to that first down marker. It looks like he does have enough that will stop the clock at two minutes. Chains are moving. That kid is tough. Bebel is really impressing me tonight, Jack. I mean, just to see the way that he's playing after being on the ground so much, whether it's in a positive way or a negative way, getting tackled, making tackles, running the ball, doing it all. He is just coming out here and still swinging the hammer at him. Back up on his feet. Wants to go over the middle to Butler. He does. Butler unable to make the catch right in the breadbasket, exactly how they drew it up, but he's unable to come down with the ball. Unfortunate there on second down. Would have been enough for a first down. Now we've got a minute 44 seconds left in the game. Yeah, very catchable pass there. Um, hopefully we can put another one in the chamber here and make some progress up the field, Jack. You know, I think that's a situation there where somebody has a tough drop like that. They're probably going to go right back to Butler here. Let's see. I would. Second and ten. Butler over the middle. They decide to go deep to Smith, but it's not there. Going to be a third and ten now. St. Mary's needs to get some kind of yardage. Don't need to go for the home run ball. Need to at least get enough for the first down and keep the ball in your possession. I'm kind of, uh, you know, I'm going to be uh, Tony Romo-esque here and see if I can predict this play. But I think they might run a quarterback draw to get seven or eight yards here and then Something. go for it on fourth down. I think that's a good call, Charles. Look at this. They decide to go what over a the middle. A one-handed grab by Croft. He's still running. There's that slant. Good tackle from behind by Landon is going to move the chains. A minute, 30 seconds left to go. Can St. Mary's get another score on the board? Odell Beckham Jr. one-handed snatched it out of the air. With no gloves. Want to point out, Dylan Croft is not wearing gloves. That's an all-natural one-handed grab. No glove gang. Ooh, good Bevel block. Bevel goes deep to Bluest. Oh, he's tired. You can tell that Bluest yeah. is just exhausted. I mean, Bluest has made so many spectacular catches here tonight on offense, playing defensive end at his size. I mean, <laughs> he's going up and taking on pulling guards, fullbacks, running backs, and yet still coming out here on offense and mossing kids. Uh, he's going to be a tired, tired kid after the end of this game. No doubt. See how school goes tomorrow. Sends Blues in motion. It is going to be a handoff to Blues. They say, Blues, doesn't matter how tired you are. We're going to keep giving you the workload. He's brought out of bounds. That is going to stop the clock. A minute, nine seconds left on the board. Looks like it's going to be third down at about five. They got a we will rock you chant from this cheerleading squad of Pelston. Let's see four cheerleaders. Props to those girls. They've, they've only got four cheerleaders, four of them keeping this crowd in it. Props to the Pelston cheerleaders. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, let's see if we can get six more points on the board for dignity's sake here. We probably won't be able to steal the game away from them, but hey. We got another false start on Dylan Croft. TB is not happy. Head in his hands. Actually, I think that was a couple uh, wi wide receivers there. It looked like Croft on this side of the field and Butler on the opposite side of the field. Yeah. So, might have been actually like they just missed the snap count but there. They, but they've been doing that. St. Mary's has been jumping off sides. They've been committing false starts. This is They've got to fix it. Bebel gets it, fakes to Smith, wants to go over the middle. Another pick by Cameron. Oh, is he going to the house again? He just lowers his shoulder right into Bebel, running hard. That's two interceptions in the game for Cameron with 58 seconds left to go. And that one was even more athletic of a pick. I think Pelson's just going to knee this one out and end this game. Cameron Let me just bring up something real quick, Amazing boys. player. I got to tell you that Bebel right there, he was waiting for Cameron to make contact, and he took the contact and was trying to strip the ball back. Did you guys notice I that? I saw that. I saw that. What incredible intelligence on Bebel's part. And, you know, it looked like he was ready for the contact. It looked like, you know, sometimes, you know, I played quarterback in high school. When you throw an interception, you've got so much just pent up rage. You're just mad at yourself and you want to get out there. And um, But kudos to Bevel for having his head on a swivel like that, trying to get the ball back, going for the strip. Clock is winding down here in Pelston with just under 40 seconds to play. One more, one more knee and for sure this one will be done. Yep. 34, 33, 32, 31, 30. Isaiah Crawford waiting for the referee to raise his hand. 
so he can make one more knee. We want to thank our sponsors again for tonight's game. Jimmy John's, J&J &J Construction, Gaylord Eye Center, Gaylord Seal Coating, BC Pizza, Schultz Party Store, Next Level Sandbag, and you know, thank you for supporting Next Level Broadcasting. We will be back on the other side of this commercial break. Are you sick and tired of monotonous family dinners? Then you need to call an Audible and let BC Pizza take care of the rest. They've been the best source of handmade hometown gourmet pizzas since 1988. And with over 30 locations, they're built to serve you. Their presence in each community has been second to none. BC Pizza has a wide variety of menu options, including salads, grinders, and of course, their famous pizza. BC Pizza, the best choice pizza. Hello, this is Charles, founder of Next Level Sandbag. And right now, it doesn't take more than a glance to see how high the water levels are in northern Michigan. As we know, lake levels go in cycles. A few years high, a few years stable, and then a few years low. I started Next Level Sandbag to give you a temporary solution to a temporary problem. Our services can save existing break walls, trees, lawns, and other features you want to protect from high rising water and add a fraction of the cost of other options. To learn more, visit Next Level Sandbag on Facebook and then give us a call. We all know that Jimmy John's is everyone's go-to option for freaky fast subs, but did you know that they're unveiling new menu options? That's right, Jimmy John's new menu has something for everyone and is a great way to feed the whole family. So, whether you're watching the big game, hard at work, or taking the family out to eat, Jimmy John's wants to make finding a gourmet sandwich easy. The crew of Next Level Broadcasting trusts their pregame meals to Jimmy John's, and you should too, at Jimmy John's in Gaylord. Welcome back, folks. Game over here in Pelston. The Hornets ended out on top in this one, 34-8. to eight. Excellent game by the quarterback, Kenny Crawford, Isaiah Crawford. Crawford boys tearing it up. Pair of interceptions by Garrett Cameron, the junior. Ethan Landon, the senior, making big plays. Just a great Pelston squad. On the other side of it, St. Mary's just couldn't match it. Couldn't match the intensity by Pelston. Pelston was able to do whatever they wanted offensively. Uh, St. Mary's made a good stand, had a good run there. They weren't able to get some points on the board and get a two-point conversion. Uh, led there by Gavin Bevel for most of the game, but just not enough. It looks like Pelston is going to come out on top of the Ski Valley Conference. Blom, what, do you th what, what are some of your takeaways from this football game? Uh, this was the most fun I've had watching football since I've been doing next-level broadcasting, Jack. Um, just an equal amount of want it by both teams. Kind of started off stale uh, by the Hornets and by the uh, Snowbirds. Well, maybe more on the Snowbird side of things. But um, it picked up, especially after halftime. And it was great to watch. The aggression picked up in the second half. The playmaking stepped up. The energy stepped up. Everything was in motion. Um, just a lot of things to comment on here. You had Bevel pretty much doing it all. You know, he was on the ground getting tackled. He was making plays, doing the tackling. He was running the ball. He was passing the ball. Um, he was returning the ball. And he did a great job of always playing with an intensity and aggression. Um, Bluest picking balls and passes out of the air like he does it for a living. Um, great to see that type of effort coming from this offense and never giving up. Um, that's one thing. Maybe the energy wasn't as great as other times in the game, but just to watch two teams not give up at one point in time was absolutely phenomenal to watch at a high school level. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us here, folks. A beautiful night here in Pelston once again on a Thursday instead of a Friday. Thank you again for everyone listening in. Absolutely love the chatter in the, uh, in the chat. We want to give out our player of the game, a uh, little discussion, little debate. Uh, but player of the game has got to go to the St. Mary's player who played the best. And no doubt tonight it was Gavin Bevel once again. Yeah, no participation trophies today, Jack. I mean, he just straight up deserved it tonight. They, uh, he just put the – I mean, they were going as he was going. He was coming down from his defensive back spot, making great tackles. He was rolling out in the pocket. He had the lone – touchdown as well the connection from him to Bluest 
And I see that connection happen a lot more throughout this year when St. Mary's needs something to happen, when they can't just hand the ball off, when they can't just snap it to Bevel and him keep it, when they need to air the ball out. I like that Airbnb connection going from Bevel to Bluest. So as I said, that's going to wrap, wrap it up here for us in Pelston. I'm Jack Cordy alongside Tyler Blom, Charles Strail, Thick Boy, Tyler Bowerman producing. Jess Macalicious on the camera. Camera two, Johnny Burkhart, Mr. Swagalicious. Thank you to everyone listening in. Big shout out to my mom. I hope you're listening to mom. I love you. And Patrick Ballinger. Hope you're holding it down with those eggs there, buddy. Uh, this is Next Level Broadcasting. We'll check you back here next Friday. Who are we playing? St. Mary's is playing Cedarville at home in Cedarville. St. Mary's Okay, playing okay, Cedarville. we'll check our Wi-Fi. Okay, so we should have that game covered for you folks. So be tuning in next Friday. Once again, this is Next Level Broadcasting. Have a great night. Hey, hey.